Okay, can I welcome everyone to the meeting of the Planning Committee on the 25th of August 2021? Yeah. Can I first of all offer any apologies? Thank you, Convener. No apologies have been submitted for the meeting. Thank you, Convener. Okay, any declarations of interest? Yes, Convener, could I declare a non pecuniary interest in item 5? Five. Uh -huh. It won't affect the way I vote. I'd rather just hear, wait and see what the, the story is here and get okay. all the information before I vote. Fair enough. The, uh, any other declarations of interest? No. Okay, item four is the minutes of the meeting of the 16th of June. Any questions? Can we accept the, the, the minutes? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Item five. Thanks, Mr. Hughes. All right, then. Item five is the application to the Tesla Road line rig. Well, Martin Forrest Limited, Manor Forest Limited. Who's taking this one? That's myself, convener Kevin Brown. All right, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, convener. This, this item is an update report relating to an application for planning permission in principle for the construction of a new roundabout on Slamanon Road, Lime Rig, and for the formation of a new access road from this roundabout through farmland to the northwest of Lime Rig to tie into allocated housing site H25. Members may recall this application was previously presented to Planning Committee on the 26th of August 2020, when Committee agreed to continue the application to allow the applicants additional time to make further submissions in respect of previous refusal reasons associated with Planning Application, in, uh, for planning application P180295 PPP on this site. The applicants have now provided additional information relating to coal risk, drainage, flood risk and transportation impacts. These submissions have been sufficient to address a number of the previous refusal reasons. However, it should be noted that no additional information in the form of justification for the proposed access road or roundabout has been received. In addition, and despite submissions from the applicant, it's considered that the, ap the applicants have failed to demonstrate that the proposal would be acceptable in terms of drainage arrangements. The officer recommendation in paragraph 9 of today's report therefore contains two refusal reasons relating to policy justification and drainage respectively. In, a, in addition to the consideration of the in additional information submitted by the applicants, I'd ask committee to note that since the application last appeared before, appeared before planning committee, Falkirk Local Development Plan 2 has now been adopted. The proposal has been assessed against the updated policies within LDP 2. And this is reflected within the refusal reasons set out in the officer recommendation. And lastly, paragraph three of today's report highlights the recent submission of a proposal of application notice for the residential development of land through which the proposed road, um, which is the subject of today's application, is proposed to be routed. The proposal of application notice has not yet resulted in the submission of a formal application for planning permission to develop this land. But it's worth noting that the, the land in question is not allocated for housing within the newly adopted LDP2. The proposed development of this land would therefore be significantly contrary to the terms of the development plan. The submission of this proposal of application notice has not therefore been given any weight as a material consideration in the assessment of this current application. In conclusion, the officer recommendation to planning committee today is that planning permission in principle be refused for the reasons outlined in paragraph 9 of today's report. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. The uh, open to questions, points, comments from the floor. Thanks for care. Uh, thanks, convener. Can I just uh, ask, ask uh, Mr. Brown, with regards to the terms of the roundabout, the application across the road that says in uh, number five, in terms of the history, that 
it certainly would help the other side or it's saying that a roundabout as far as I can see would help the development across the road but and A, the provision of roundabout access compliant with DM, RB or other junction where it can be demonstrated that come it complies with the DIMRB and safely serve the development and operate with capacity. And I take it this is number six. The wording of condition does not therefore explicit require the provision of a roundabout. Well, if we're, if we're trying to develop, this is no large work we're, we're talking, this is line big. So I think that if we get in the developer to help create more houses, more social houses, it can only be beneficial for the the area of Limerick. Currently, has no uh, shop and hasn't had for a number of years. So, with the the chance of getting more houses either side, I would like to think that it would encourage a developer to come and do a shop there. Uh, so my first question to, to Mr Brown, is that a contradiction, contradiction with regards the wording of condition does not therefore explicit the provision of a roundabout? Regarding the five E. Mr. Brown, do you want to answer that? I don't think there's a contradiction there. It's a case of um being able to demonstrate what the most suitable access point would be um for the site across the road. Um what we were assessing here is is purely and simply an a, a roundabout and an access road through the farmland. Um, to tie into the allocated housing site to the south, um, there, there isn't any proposal on this application to tie into the site across the road, albeit that may may have potentially been possible at a future date. But um, I'm not sure that there's a contradiction there. It's a case of being able to assess the detail and, and find out what the most appropriate access provision would be for, depending on the scale of development that would come forward. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Uh, Brown. Leading, leading on for that, uh, I see that in the, a previous, the previous application, which was a year ago, uh, that I've been inundated with uh, submissions, emails from local residents regarding uh, the speed people drive up that road to get into the village. It's a blind summit at the top, so we've already had a fatality at the top of the road uh, a few years ago when a, a child was uh, knocked down. So I think a roundabout would help that. Uh, my, my next question is regarding uh, it says it doesn't as a such feature of the nature as an item eight point four as a such feature in this nature would require plan permission in its own right. Is appropriate to ask for such reports at this stage? It's a is it a planning principle or is it a planning application? Yeah, we've had um, various um, discussions and, and, and correspondence with the applicants on, on this issue um, about whether or not it's appropriate to ask, ask for the level of detail that's been, asked, been requested of them in terms of um, various issues, drainage being one of them, flooding and, and so on and so forth. Um, the, the issue we have um, specifically with this application is that the application site boundary is drawn so tightly to the proposed roundabout 
and the access road that any um, SUDS provision that may be acquired would actually be out with the, 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 the boundary of the application site. And therefore, we couldn't condition that element. It would have to be a, an application in its own right. Um, so it's, 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 it's the level of detail is, is required there to be able to demonstrate that the road can, 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 can work and the roundabout can work in practical terms. Um, obviously, it is a planning, a planning permission and principal application. Further detail would be required further down the line if, 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 if matters were to prog progress. But yeah, the, the, the major stumbling block here is, is the, how tightly drawn the red line boundary is to the, to the application itself. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Just one final question, Convener. With regards to the time it's taken for this, as all the delay being on the applicant's uh, behalf, or because that's a year for for around about surely, and I know we've had COVID and people uh, working from home, but can you tell me how it's took a year, uh, Mr. Brown? Well, I would say there's probably a combination of factors. You've touched on some of them there. Um, the application, its nature requires the submission of, of, of various pieces of information, which, which weren't necessarily submitted um, up front with the application when it came in initially. So there was a period of, of waiting for certain information to come in. When we did receive the various pieces of information that were submitted, there was a period of discussion about whether or not that was sufficient or enough information to be able to progress with the application and we allowed the applicant um, time to to essentially make submissions in that respect it's come to a head at the moment because the applicant has essentially said to us that um, they don't want to continue in that dialogue um, and that there's not they feel that there's nothing else that they can submit at this stage with this application to, to progress matters so we've 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 drawn it to ahead here with the, the recommendation today um but yes there's, there's been various workload matters COVID has complicated things um the application itself um when it was initially submitted required additional information so yeah there's been a com combination of factors but um i think the recommendation we've got to today is um appropriate for the level of information that's been submitted thanks mr brown and i hope you didn't ask my asking that convener uh, because it's a long time for an application to be to be sitting uh, hanging about. Uh, thanks, convener. Thanks, Mr. Brown. Yeah, anyone else? Can, convener, convener, sorry. Let's have a fucking go first. Is that okay, convener, for me to go yeah, next? Yeah. <clears throat> right. Yes, um, right. The, the first thing to say is I called this application in um, provisionally to go to sites to discuss some of the, the, the discussions about this, where these accesses is. Um, I believe there's some photographs that may may help that. Um, could we see these photographs of the where we're actually talking about, please, if, if possible? Surely. Who's Kevin? Is it you, yourself? Has got the photographs? I think Bernard's working on it at the moment. All right. Okay, so the the photograph that's on the screen. Can you guys see the the photograph as it is at the moment? Yeah, uh, everybody it's see Very that? small. It's very small. Okay. Don't know if it can be increased in size. Any? What what's shown on the screen at the moment is the photo taken from um, the main road, looking uh, to the north. Um, the head row on the oh, the head row on the left hand side. Sorry, Kevin, if I just interrupt, councillors, if you press on the magnifying glass at the left hand side of your screen, there should be a black bar with uh, two magnifying glasses. If you press on the one with the plus, it will zoom the picture bigger. <laughs> uh, uh. 
So the, the, the photograph that's on the screen at the moment shows the position of the proposed roundabout on the main road. Um, this is looking north um, from the lime rig is at the back of the camera, to be honest. Um, the hedgerow that's in front of you there is, is, is roughly the position of the proposed access. Um, Bernard, could you scroll down to the next photograph, please? This is uh, taken again from the main road, looking back up towards Lime Rig, so towards the south. And again, you can see the the hedgerow there, which and the field beyond it, um, where the proposed access road would would go. Can you move on to the next one, please? This this photograph is um, further to the south, um, where the proposed access road would reconnect back into the main um, to the main road on, and through Lime Rig. Um, again, this is looking um, just off slightly to slightly to the north. If we can scroll into the next one, please. This is looking back in the 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 opposite direction, back into Lime Rig itself, and the the, the Harris fence in there on the right hand side. Uh, that's that portion there, which is where the the proposed access road would reconnect back in. Thanks, Bernard. And this this one here is a photograph taken from within the allocated housing site on the south of the the, the proposed access road, looking back along the, where the line of the road it would essentially go straight through the middle of this shot and um, back down towards the roundabout, which sits in a sort of hollow down towards the the, the north of the site. I don't know if it's worth Bernard bringing up the proposed location plan and site plan as well, if you if you could. So that that's the that's the proposed routing of the the access road, um, the the wedge in the southern portion of the site is the allocated housing site H H twenty five it's referred to now in the, the new local plan, and it's all just existing farmland the remainder of the site. Hey, Councillor McClucky. Hi, um, <clears throat> could firstly could go back to the view where we've got um, things stolen folk going in. Uh, the forest road, which maybe the Satan drawn place, Satan plan. Next one. No, no I think uh, the photographs, Bernard, I think the second photograph. Pho photograph. Go back to that one. That one. <clears throat> right, thanks, Convener. What you see is looking up the hill and, uh, and you see it's a steep hill and it's, there's a wee flat bit here where the, that's a forest road on the right to take out trees. So there's an access already to come out there when they start felling the forestry. That belongs to the forestry. And then just past that is the, the applicant's area, which is starting to go off the wee flat area. The other application would be directly where we were talking about an access would approximately be across for that forest bit um, entrance to the right. So it'd be on the left hand side going up up the hill. Um, these are all connected. The the application that came in for the left hand side of the road was in the local plan for many years. Um, it then got proposed by officers in the last local plan to come out. Um, elected members agreed to take it out and it went out to consultation, but just before it came out in, the, in, in 2018, an application came in and then officers granted the application to their side of the road. Um, so then we had to change the local plan to include it again um, to, to, to go in. So that's the history in that one. And when it came through the planning process, I was going to call it in because I was concerned about the access, which was shown at this location, um, you know, which is across for the forestry law road, which is a wee blue line past the roundabout um, at the top of the picture on the left there. Um, 
<clears throat> as I say, his other entrance is directly across from from that. Um, but what I was told was that um, there was a condition in the plan application that would cover that because to say that a roundabout suitable to officers and that um, would be included. So I didn't object at that time. So it went through an officer's um, view. Now, we have seen the statement on the application for that side of the road. And I'm only discussing that application because, you know, we have gained a principal application there and that is relevant as at the same location. And uh, we did see that the what the officers have said is that the the roundabout uh, doesn't need to be a roundabout as stated um in the on the committee report. And in the five a frisoning the roundabout compliant with design manual for roads and bridges or other junction which can be demonstrated right um, to serve the development um, officers are printing that if we looked at the the full um, application for that site transport planning unit says no objection subject to a condition of a footpath and provision of a roundabout access doesn't it say a roundabout or other access and Although we print 5A about the, the roundabout, 5B states the provision of a bus layby as a condition and bus stop on the northern exit from the roundabout. So quite clear again, you know, transport planning saying a roundabout, the, uh, the condition B says a roundabout. So that was why I was referring to roundabout. Now, whether it ends up a roundabout or an access. If there's no roundabout, I take it we're maybe not getting the bus stop. But um, as I say, we will find out in due course when, uh, as it's a planning in principle, when a final application right. comes in, or if it does come in, when that site. On this side of the road, the present application that we're discussing is some similar. They have, unlike the other side, which showed just a road in, and then we put a condition with a roundabout. This shows a roundabout, but it doesn't connect to the other side and is uh, a few metres further up. And my my idea for, for calling it in was that certainly with the history, and obviously as Councillor Kerr has mentioned it, I have a communication just a few months ago from the Police Scotland that due to the concerns from the the public in Lime Rig, they were going to put, try to put a mobile camera up a year ago. However, they couldn't get a position for it. And what they've said is they are going to try again to find a position to deal with the problem of speeding coming down that hill. So what I'm saying is, Police Scotland's got a concern for, for speeding just at the top of that hill and coming over. Um, and the public has, has sent a number of emails to me, can I do something about it? And in fact, I raised this subject when I was convener of the, the local community group there, um, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, at that time, we were told we couldn't get the road coming because the road was for um, coal mining and, and that, and there could be low loaders and machines going up. And also I raised this because I'm saying, whatever kind of roundabout goes up, it would need to still allow, you know, low loaders and things to go up. And, I felt that a full roundabout on one side of the road or a full on the other side of the road may, may make folk just speed through or um, would it be more difficult for a, a low loader to go around? So that was that was my, 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 my questions. Um, what we've got here is there's a, a roundabout that to me, we've already gained on the other side, so I don't see what the difference is in the plan and principle, because at the end of the day, if, uh, we, we were told that there is a major application pending. The community groups know it, you know, being um, as in the process of being consulted. We'll look in what that, that is. I don't get involved in the things, but we'll hear for the public, we'll hear for officers in due course, I take it. And a full application comes in for either side of the road, we would get the full information and it need to be compliant to your roads um, thing. Anyway. Because if, if they couldn't get a suitable roundabout or accesses, it would never happen because we wouldn't support it. Our officers wouldn't support it and members wouldn't support it. But this is a planning in principle that we've already granted it on, at roughly that location for the other side. So I don't see what the, the difference is. 
in, in my view, if the two were passed, there's a possibility of collaborative working and, and hopefully address the, the, the safety issue in the village and serve, you know, it's not for us to say whether one development goes or whether the two go or nine go uh, um, at this stage. That we need further information to towards that. What I do so is say is that the road into the right side, which is the present application, goes up to H25. We've seen a photograph of that derelict site in the middle of um, the middle of Lime Rig <clears throat> that was put it was given it was put in the local plan many years ago and it was uh, it's still in the local plan and it was given planning permission which has since lapped. <clears throat> the new information we've got on local plan two, which has just been adopted, states that we support now vacant, derelict, unstable, contaminated land applications. Clearly, the it was an old uh, lorry demolisher thing. It goes way up in that site. It's heavily contaminated. Um, there need to be a lot of work done, and maybe that's why that application hasn't been forward. So clearly, there would need to be some sort of business plan to make it viable, which maybe mean um, extending that site. We wouldn't can that to this uh, other applications due, and and it's no for us to prejudge applications. So clearly, to me, there's a lot of information to come in future years. Um, Hopefully, I'm here. You know, they say that the good die young, so I'll live a while. Um, so I'm going to be here to see it. The access is um, that, that that come in, but if we've gained one, I don't see what the difference is. Gain the other. It's, at the end of the day, it will have to come back. A full a full applications, and um, which members can reject or support then, which would be obliged to give us all the relevant information. I just, in the eyes of consistency, you know, no for any other reason, um, you know, think that it may be viable. But the roads officers are obviously at this same, um, at this same um, meeting today, and maybe they've a comment, you know, what would be ideal, because at the end of the day, it's got to be agreeable to them. So, you know, um, is it, you know, one side of the road, two sides of the road, plus a, Plus the, the the forest road coming out, you know, wouldn't it? Would a roundabout be the best option to accommodate everybody to make it to make it make any harmony to regenerate the village and hopefully uh, get a new school again? Or would um, would it not? Get my mind. Kevin, do you have any answers to the points that McCluggy has raised? Um, I think what I would maybe just say is that the the application before us at the moment and at this moment in time is is through an area of land which isn't allocated, and that that that's the that's the key issue from from an officer's perspective here. Assessment against the terms of the local development plan. Obviously, there's there is the the access uh, issue that's been discussed at length uh, for the site opposite it. Um, it would really depend on the nature of development that was to come forward as to as to what was required there in terms of access provision, whether that be the scale of a roundabout or a junction. Um, we don't have details here that uh, with this application that tie into to that proposal, um, and and this application is for more than just a roundabout in its own right. There's the access road as well. So I think I'd, I'd, I'd just draw it back to that um, purely the assessment against the terms of the current local development plan, um, and that that's really where the the officer recommendation stems from. Yeah, appreciate that. Convener, I did I did ask you, Rhodes, but obviously the plan officer has answered. But as I say, as I have read to you the conditions, these conditions stand, and it says a lay by and bus stop in the north of the roundabout, and then the transport plan and saying a roundabout. You know, you. Whatever goes there, we granted planning permission in this same location, another road, and yet we're told the now that we didn't ken whether it's got to be a road, whether it's got to be a roundabout or what it is. We were happy to await to see what information comes forward in the future. So I don't see the difference in this application. You know, um, at this stage, they, they can't say what the road's for. We can, there's a planning application in, so I'm 99% sure I know what it is, and it's probably to 
to, to increase too soon on this area to um, the local plan was due to start this year. We don't even know what the local plan saying because it has been put forward. So we'll need to listen to our officers and that. Members have got a say in the local plan and, uh, and, and, and sites can come in. So <clears throat> that that has been put back a year. And obviously, as I say, there is a, a, a pending application that I'll be very keen to listen to the residents of Lime Rig. I spent half my life in Lime Rig, 30 odd year at six different houses, all within 20 yards or, or 30 yards of the of the site, um, at other entrance. And as I say, it is vacant, contaminated area that was already granted planning in the thing, mate. And, and without a doubt, the, 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 the possible has, has no way to say to them because on an occasion, but it may be that, that some um, extra houses would would, would um, make it viable. I know that every person that lives in that village wants something done with that, and the local plan is saying that we should support that. And that road does go to it. But, you know, it, it's not going to get built, is it? And they're not going to be a roundabout built for either application or or entrance road. But our full applications come in, and and we grant. That's my, that's my point. I'll leave it at that, eh, convener. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so no more. Yeah, thanks, convener. Uh, just a, a question for, for Kevin uh, regarding uh, the, the flooding issue. If you look at the recommendation at 9.12, there's a, a big play being made regarding the potential flooding risk. Uh, I'm just wondering, what information, if anything, the applicant has actually provided relating to this? Because uh, I would have thought that uh, a detailed flood risk assessment would have had to have been provided as part of the, the major application that's pending. I just wonder if I can get that clarified. Kevin? Yes, that, during, during the course of this application, um, the applicant submitted a flood risk assessment document as well as um, the proposed drainage strategy for the the, 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 the plans that are before us that just now. The, the difficulty we have is, as I said previously, the, the, the red line boundary issue has prevented them from being able to fully um, de detail or, or, or demonstrate that they can provide, for instance, a suds pond, um, which may be required to adequately drain the road and the roundabout. Um, that in itself, if, 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 if the road were to be granted Without that 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 element being being addressed, that that in turn could lead to a potential flood risk um, further down the line. Um, but again, that's it's 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 based on on limited level of detail at this stage because it's a planning permission in principle. So it's, it's basically just a lack of information that was provided by the applicant at this point, which could be rectified with any future application. Yeah, I mean the, the the lack of information relates to to not to not being able to demonstrate that they can build a, a suds pond uh, to to drain the site. Um, it, it's it's not to say it's not possible. Um, it's just not necessarily possible within the realms of this planning application. And did we get back to them to make that point? And they haven't come back with anything further. There's nothing really that they can do in terms of being able to. Um, add additional land into the application site boundary, for instance. There was extensive dialogue between um, uh, our flooding consultants and, and, and flood experts in house and, and, and the applicant side of things to try and address um, the level of information that was required in this application um, and, and what potential solutions there were to be able to um, drain the site. Um, ultimately, we got to a, a point where we, we couldn't really go much further with that and we needed to draw it towards a conclusion. Okay, thanks for that, Kevin. Thanks, convener. Anyone else? Yes, I wonder if I could ask Kevin. Uh, you're talking about the the development and the need for a a suds pond and the ability to prove that you you're not going to cause flooding further down the road. I wonder if there's been any is, is that always compulsory error? Has there been any recent cases where planning consent was granted when the individual didn't have that? Kevin? I, I'm not sure I have 
enough knowledge of all the other applications that we've dealt with, councillor, to be able to, to answer that categorically. There, there most likely will be instances whereby um, drainage arrangements have potentially been conditioned, or certain elements of the drainage arrangements have been conditioned. Um, I, I would have thought in, in the majority of any of those cases, that would have been because there was adequate land within the application site boundary, for instance, that was able to 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 be set aside for to achieve that. The difficulty is we've got here is that there is no additional land within the application site boundary whereby we could condition that element um, that would have to come in as a separate planning application in its own right. Yeah, it's just there's one that springs instantly to mind, but I'm not really sure on the the rules about bringing that up. But um, I need to say in all honesty that I think the local member, who obviously has had uh, great knowledge of living up there, has, has put a, a very good case forward. And as the other, as, as Councillor Kerr says, I mean, this is no lag, but this is trying to regenerate a whole area. So <coughs> I'll be bearing that in mind when it comes to the vote. Thank you. Councillor Blackwood. Thanks, Regina. Convener, is it possible to put this application in the back burner until we find out what type of access we require for site H66? Uh, mm -hmm. Kevin? Um, well, there's there's a couple of difficulties there. Is that um, we 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 don't we don't have any live proposals for for that site. Um, what we have at the moment for for the current application is a, a tightly defined <clears throat> application site boundary, um, which which may restrict the ability to be able to tie into the site opposite it. Um, I think technically speaking, it would be possible to um, continue the current application. Um, I'm not really sure what the what the the um, benefit in that in doing so would would be. It, it strikes me that um, it may be more appropriate for the applicants just to come back at a later stage with with more detailed proposals. Um, should 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 more information arise. Thanks, Mr. Whitewood. Uh, content with the answer. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Bino. Okay, so Hughes, one of the local members. Yes, convener. Um, you know, when looking at the the start, it says construction of road, vehicular access, and roundabout. Can I ask, um, Mr. Brown, in terms of the construction of a road? Although um, this may be in principle, if you act, should there be um, drainage? Um, Included within road construction, have we have has there been any information relating to the drainage? Um, if if a road is uh, accepted, so yes, the the applicants have submitted um, various pieces of information with this application in terms of what they um foresee as the as the the the, the road makeup, if you like, and and how the drainage would be. Handled um, in terms of um, the, the, the finer details of of road gullies and, and so on and so forth. The the, the difficulty <laughs> is, as I say, it relates back to the the, the potential for need for a, a suds pond. Um, there is a requirement for any new access roads of this nature to 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 include a level of treatment within um, any drainage proposals um, before it goes in. Any water goes back into a water course, for instance, and that 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 really needs to to happen via a suds pond primarily is, a, is, a, is the most common way for that to happen. Um, and as I say, that's just not been possible within the, the, the <clears throat> tightly defined boundaries of this site. The, the thought crossed my mind, if you're putting in um, a, a road, um, obviously, if, if we're looking at, in the future, building affordable houses, um, is it possible that the road may be out of alignment in, in the sense that we don't know, um, in a sense, should there have been a master plan put in um, to give us an idea? I mean, the road may be constructed, but will the road bear any relevance to the, the development? Um, I don't know if, Bernard, can you show the proposed location and site plan again for a second? The, the 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 question that Councillor Hughes puts is 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 something that's that's 
that's been thought about through the course of this application. The the proposal of application notice that's been received, the boundary for that is essentially the blue line that you see on the plan before you today. Yeah. The allocated housing site H25 relates to the wedge in the south um, eastern corner of the site that Bernard's showing there at the moment. So obviously the, the, the access road that's prepared, uh, proposed in this application, it does access through quite a large proportion of land which isn't yet allocated and quite a large proportion of land which is within the proposal of application notice boundary, but but that hasn't yet resulted in a planning application being submitted. Uh, and the, it, do, it does raise the question as to how would the rest of the site be accessed, <laughs> but obviously that, that, would, that would need to be dealt with further down the line if, a, if application has transpired. So in, in some respects, um, it could be argued that this, this application is premature. That that's officer's recommendation essentially, yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Convener. Uh I'm speaking in connection with other members of of team with. Uh, but I'm satisfied that the planning uh, that we grant planning for this uh, planning principle for this road, uh, and I would move that we grant planning. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. Anyone else? Mr. McCluggy. <clears throat> right, thanks, convener. Um, what I would like to say is, if you put that drone back up um, that you just put up there, get a, a, please, Bernard. You see the application site in blue, a massive, massive site. Uh, the wedge is, I think it's 50 or 60 houses down at the other side, which is all the contaminated element of the site. Um, that originally went through that is a complete eyesore to everybody in the village. Now, for the blue, the blue line um, is surrounded on three sides by forestry. The when when the applicant, well, when the, the planner is saying that to put the suds pond because it's a hill um, for the road coming in would need to be to the north by the blue line, which would, and that's where. Well, they're not allowed to do because it's somebody else's ground to a suds pond in there. The reality is that um, forestry is there for planting trees and for doing business. And obviously they've got a, a road coming out there as well. Now, it would be rather silly uh, the forestry if, for example, the applicant was said, you gave me an area there which was suitable to a flood, uh, to a suds pond, which we need a separate application, obviously, later on, or come in in the, the full application and give another area or twice the size of the other area um, from the applicant site to, to forestry. That way, the forestry is getting twice as much um, ground to plant trees um, than the thing. May. So what I'm saying is, uh, it's not for me to say that. I'm only saying that these things are possibilities that, that certainly would be accommodated. Also, uh, in relation to the other road, even if it was using as a safety road, I don't think the road would get built by the future development when. But even suppose the applicant did want to build that 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 road coming from H25, we have known officers to to suggest that two roads go into a single house because of nearing a flood in that issue. So for a safety issue, sometimes if one road floods, you've got to hail an alternative way coming out on a one in 200 years flood. So who's to say that this even wouldn't they come down to just a safety road um, down to this area if some happened at the entrance, oil spillage, uh, an accident or something up at the, the H25? These are all, these are all things. 
these are all things that will be done in the future. So I'll say to them, hang me. Right. No, no, be no, because I don't think it's, pre it's premature, but we've already granted one, and it's an easy consistency, I would say, and and something needs to happen in Limerick. That sucks. I, I, at this stage, I can't see what. But I'll, I will say to Councillor Kerr. Okay, anyone else, Councillor uh, Bouse? Uh, thank you, convener. Um, it's been interesting listening uh, to everybody, um, and I'm, I'm sure John, you'll see us all. It. Um, you were talking about it earlier <laughs> on. Um, Agreed. The, <laughs> the, I, I am of a mind, and, and, and listening to a number of people, like John touched on it slightly, um, but but I know Jim and uh, Gordon had said it that that I actually suspect that this is. Uh, slightly premature, and given that there is old, already uh, a planning permission on, we'll call it the wedge, because I think that's what everybody is referring it, referring it to. Um, I would prefer to see this uh, coming through at the time that we get the full planning on uh, the we the wedge area. You could end up with a silly situation that you get two roundabouts and and a hundred hundred yards apart. Um, it's no Cumbernauld, but um, and so. I think it is. I think also when you look at um, the officer's recommendations, um, I think the applicants failed to demonstrate uh, a suitable form of justification for the proposed development. The, 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 with the exception of the wedge area, uh, if, and Kevin, you might you can correct me on this. I understand the rest of it is not uh, deemed to be housing under LDB two. Would that be right? right. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Um, and. There is obviously questions over uh, the the Suds Pond part of it, um, whether that would have to be in somebody else's land. So it does put a question over that. So, but you take the pre that it is premature. You take the, the the land that it's going through is not um, designated for housing, and that there is still a question over the the, the actual uh, potential flooding uh, in the land. Um, I'm going to propose that we follow the the officer's recommendations, which I understand would be an amendment um, um, on this occasion. And, and, and hopefully that was clear enough. Right, I'll second Mr. Henderson. Henderson. Very clear. The, uh, anyone else? I was just saying I'll second Councillor Bouts. Yeah, we've got that one, Gordon. Anyone else? Okay, can I just add that? Uh, the consistent position surely has to be the own or the, the, the opinion of the, the officers uh, from the previous applications to this one. And uh, they, they made quite clear. The uh, I think we, we, we know what the impact would be uh, if uh, this application was approved. And uh, that, that's something that uh, we hear has been said with regards to the issue of regeneration. I'm not sure that uh, the, the, the it's applicable in this case because of the scale, uh, but uh, the uh, I'm happy to support Councillor Bowes in his amendment. Okay, can we go to the vote? Thank you, okay, thank you, convener. Uh, can I clarify with um, Councillor Karen, Councillor McClucky? Uh, the, the nature of the motion and the reasons. It's important, particularly when going against officers' recommendation that the reasons are, are clearly stated. From the discussion that's taken place, my notes indicate that you believe certain material considerations would outweigh the, the development plan. And in particular, that would be that the opportunity to introduce a roundabout as part of the development on the main road would be beneficial from a road safety and traffic management perspective, and the development would be beneficial for the area of Lime Rig. And accordingly, you would you would grant planning permission and presumably subject conditions as determined by the acting director of development <coughs> services. Is that uh, a reasonable summary, councillors? Reasonable summary. I was I would say so, Ian, and the fact that the principal has already been granted on the same uh, roughly the same location on the other side of the road. So officers have already um you know supported that and this is their consistency. So 
Thank you. Thank you, councillors. So on that basis, I, I will not repeat the, the wording of the motion, but we have a motion to grant as discussed there with, by Councillor Kerr, seconded by Councillor McClucky. And we have an amendment by Councillor Bowes, seconded by Councillor Hughes, to refuse the grant of planning permission in principle in accordance with the, the officer's recommendations. So running through by way of a, a roll call vote, uh, Councillor Alexander. For the amendment. Provost Buchanan. Motion. Councillor Blackwood. Amendment. Councillor Bowes. Amendment. Councillor Goldie. Motion. Councillor Hughes. Amendment. Councillor Kerr. <clears throat> Councillor Kerr. A motion. Thanks, Councillor Kerr. Uh, Councillor McHugh. A for the amendment. Councillor McClucky. Motion. Councillor Murta. Amen. Councillor Nicol. Councillor Nicol. Sorry, for the motion. Thank you, Councillor Nicol. Councillor Nimmo. For the motion. Canon, can I check if you got an equality of votes also? Six for the motion and six for the amendment. Yep, yeah, agreed, Ian. Um, thanks, thanks, Karen. We we have uh, uh, an equality of votes. We have six votes for the motion and six votes for the amendment. In this circumstance, the the convener of the meeting is entitled to exercise a casting vote. So I will pass over to to the convener. I exercise that vote in favour of the amendment. Thank you, convener. On that basis, the amendment is duly carried. Thank you, convener. Okay, thank you for that. Item six is the rights of the dwelling house. Uh, sorry, Ross. What's the page? What is here? Third Street, Falkirk. Uh, the uh, I believe there's a deputation message for us. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson, I was there. First of all, can I ask members if we're happy to hear the uh, the deputation? Agreed. Happy to hear them. Is that agreed? Agreed. 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 There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Right. Good. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The have you it's kind of now in the procedures for you? Yes, yes. Right. So you know you've got ten minutes and then we'll yeah. take any questions that you have or any questions that members have. Uh, so the floor's yours. Right, uh, this is, uh, I would point out, we were not the original agents for this. We've been asked to represent the applicant here for well, not relevant reasons, but uh, this is a fairly straightforward four metre wide, ex coming four metres out from the rear of the property, single storey extension to a semi detached house. These houses were built about 15 years ago. The applicant stayed in this house for 15 years or so, and as they describe it, they are dream home. They have no intentions of moving anywhere, but with a young daughter who obviously is growing up, they need a bit more space. Uh, these these houses were strange. They, they, were, they were built with a, each one has a kind of raised deck, which is about 1,200 millimetres, four feet off the ground that runs along the back. Yeah, So they've all got that, yeah. The applicant made the application 
there were representations, objections to it on various matters, one of which was uh, problems with the potential problems from a log burning stove they wanted to install and a flu that was removed in consultation with uh, Stuart Robson, the, the planner. Also, there was the idea they wanted to build a higher boundary fence, but again, Stuart thought that was not appropriate and it was modified. The application as it stands has the support of Stuart and uh, there were a, a number of obje objections for which fell into the category, if I can go through them. First one is overshadowing. Yeah, the applicant prepared a drawing showing that it did, there was no issue with overshadowing, that it, it met with the requirements of SG03, which relates to extensions and alterations, and Stuart accepted that. The concerns raised about the wood burner roll, that was removed, so that's that's fine. Uh, there were concerns about the size, scale, and design of the extension, but again, Stuart concluded that on balance it would not harm the visual amenity of the street scene. Uh, was, there was a point about loss of view, but again, Stuart rightly pointed out there's no loss of view is not a material consideration in Scotland when you're uh, having a planning application. There was a CEPA flooding. There was an issue, but again, uh, Stuart referred to it and said, as as is, is always the case, a modest extension, you never take account of flooding with that. That's never an issue. The point that structural damage to neighbouring properties, if they built it, but again, not a planning matter, and that structural things would be sorted out at the at the stage of building one application, I don't as an as structural as a as an as, as an architect, I don't see any issues with structures. We do these types of extensions all over the place, no issues. There was concerns about, you know, there there only is a, a narrow shared access and there was worry about uh, you know construction noise and mess and whatever, but I think these are always the case, and there's always, you know, there will be plan conditions to limit certain things, and there are legal requirements as to not making a mess of your neighbour's place. So that was that was the four issues really, or the five issues, and Stuart agreed that the objections were not relevant, and also that his recommendation was to, to approve the the, the application. Uh, it's obviously been called in, you know, due to local members' concern, perhaps. I don't know. But that's basically where we are in summary. Uh, there are privacy issues just now. The the neighbour, not the applicant, but the neighbour to uh, in number 10 has a kind of garden building. They have a, an exercise frame, quite a big thing that they use for their, their own, I think, the Taekwondo enthusiasts or someone and they have this deck and the idea of this would be to extension would help to to stop people number 10 looking at number 12 and and give them give them some element of privacy yeah so that's basically it there is a recommendation to approve it all of the points brought up by the adjoining neighbors have been addressed or they have been deemed not relevant in planning terms. So that's where we are. And we would obviously hope that you would grant the application. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Yeah. Thompson. Is there any questions for the, the agent of the, the uh, applicant? No questions? Okay, thanks for your contribution, Mr. Mr. Thompson. It's much appreciated. The uh, cast, which planner is dealing with this one? That would be myself, convener. Sorry? That would be myself, Stuart Robson, convener. Sorry? That would be myself, Stuart Robson, convener. Right, I apologise, Stuart. The, uh, when do you go, the floor's yours. 
Thank you, convener. Um, the detailed application here is for a single story rear extension, raised decking area and boundary fence, which is at 12 Church Street in Cairnshore. In terms of consultations, no consultations were carried out as a result of the proposals. In terms of representations, as Mr. Thompson's already outlined, there were three letters of objection received during the neighbour notification process and details of the points raised are summarised in paragraph 6.1 of the report and they are addressed in paragraphs 7b5 to 7b11 of the report. The proposals have been assessed as being in accordance with policy HC08 residential extension and alterations and the Falkirk Local Development Plan 2 and the, any associated supplementary guidance. It's considered that there aren't any material considerations which would justify a recommendation to review the proposals. As a result, the officer recommendation is to approve the application subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Okay, thanks for that. Should the, uh, can I ask any contribution from the floor? Questions? Councillor Blackwood? Sorry, can we run out any indicator when to speak? All right. Councillor McClucky? Aye. I'm happy to move Grant. Uh, the officer's quite clear in the report and verbally there, and so is uh, the applicant. That there is no justification for refusal um, uh, that I see or heard or can imagine. Um, so happy to go on with the officer's recommendation to grant the application. Happy to second that, convener. Councillor Murtha. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having some technical difficulty and um, I don't know if you can hear me okay, you're a bit staccato. Just. Hear me all right? Just hear you. I'll try turning my video off. Is that any better if I turn my video off? It is a bit better, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll try uh, say some. Um, thanks, Kavina. <clears throat> I think um, the reason that I had originally called in and, and the, the piece of it was, was, was quite clear in his recommendation there, but in some of the discussions I had had with him, although I've certainly not taken a view on this application prior to coming here, and, um, although the applicant and very, great, very uh, welcome has amended their proposals to take out some of the, the more um, difficult aspects in terms of the, the flu and that's uh, that, and that's been. Uh, within the planning conditions that there wouldn't be one added. Um, I think when I certainly spoke with the plan officer and perhaps um, it's not so much the, the issues about overshadowing, but there was certainly the scale of the proposed um, extension was perhaps not um, necessarily what you would, would call in, in relative terms to the, the, the property perhaps but it, um, it was on, on the large side I would say I wouldn't say it was you know extra large but I suppose Members who are familiar with the topography of that site um, and the levels and the way the fences are with the rear gardens, it, it was in particular some concern about this, the size and scale, which is why I thought perhaps the committee would, would like to look at um, the full details. And I wanted to see a full report. I um, don't know whether Stuart could, could comment on uh, the, the, the mapping, although we said it was within policy. I think perhaps an elaboration on. The relative scale to the new gardens and the person of fences would be maybe uh, illustrative for members. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, yes, I think the size of the proposal is probably on the limit of what would be acceptable in this location. Um, it is a slightly unusual topography in this area as. Um, Certification, there is a raised decking area to the rear of the property, um, which is seen in the other neighbouring properties as well. And there is a drop away from the rear of the property to the garden area. I don't know whether Bernard could maybe show some of the site photos, which might help make it a bit clearer. Bernard? Yes, so you can see here, this is looking directly to the rear of the property. Uh, as it is as, at the moment, there's the raised decking area with steps down to the garden area. 
And as you can see, that, that's reflected across the neighbouring properties as well. So I would just think if you could just sort of pause on, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me or not, uh, or, but, but I think some of those pictures, it kind of showed there's a sort of set um, level to these, and therefore, I think that was my concern that given one of my discussions with Stuart, that it was, it would be right on the limit of size anyway, that given the kind of step up, step down, I think it, it kind of, in, it, it felt that that would therefore increase the size of the, um, you know, of, of the massing of that particular uh, extension. I have to say, I, I'm, I welcome the, the adjustments that have been made, which I do think make it better in the, in the conditions that are in, but I um, think not necessarily you have, we have to go to sites because you can see from the pictures there that they are quite clear, but it did give me a level of discomfort about the, it being quite on the limit and the size of it, and I thought it, it was meant to be called in so that the, the, the committee could have a look at it, and I don't know whether any other colleagues have any other um, thoughts on on that, having seen the pictures on that, or whether the committee is minded to say to go off the second day. Is there no? Give your hand up. Sorry, convener, I didn't have my hand up. Uh, apologies. Thanks for uh, Thank you. I think the drawings there were very useful. Um, because I was asking my question, I guess I was not said it was single story, but four meters high. But but with the drop down, that explains why you've got a four meter high extension. Um, looking at those drawings, uh, with uh, with no windows being to the side, um, if anything, I think that would probably give better privacy, um, at least to to part of the garden. Then, because it's a strange detail the way it is, uh, and now. Um, from what I can see there, I'm happy to support the the the, the approval um, of this. Um, I was a wee bit worried about the height size of it, but but the height size of it is explained with, with the drop down because um, obviously there'll be the actual floor level will be quite a bit up because it has to be. Okay, anyone else? Mr. McClucky? Yes, Kinjera. I had to ask for photos from the first application, and then obviously the planner asked a few photos to go up from the second one. But during the presentation of an application, we went on about for years that it would maybe save a lot of site meetings. If there's photographs available, why do they not come up during the presentation from the officers right away without having to ask is there any photos? So sorry for that, but um, you know, I thought it was just worth a point. Thank you. Okay, it's a fair point, and should be taken on board, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, anyone else with regards to this application? We've got a mover and a seconder, and for the amendment, we have a mover. I think Councillor Bowes. Uh, no, I didn't sorry. put an amendment in. You're right, you're right. The um is anyone otherwise minded? Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks very much. All present. We'll uh I'll leave you to it now. Thank you. Oh, okay. And item seven is the erection of a video mass. Well, I can be there. Can everyone hear me? Yes. I'm going to leave the meeting. Yeah. Well, I can be there. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? David, David Patterson. You move this report. Good morning, can we have a kick? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Oh, you can. Yes. I can. Yes. Because I've been having computer difficulties this morning. I I, I do apologise. Um, I'm happy for Bernard to scroll through the plan and the photographs while while, while I'm speaking. 
Uh, okay. This application proposes the erection of three antennae in the rear garden of 39 Birdland Avenue, Bowness, for the purposes of amateur radio communications. The mass one extends to 31 feet in height. Two extends to 32 feet in height. However, this antenna is not currently in place on the mounting pole, and mass three extends to 24 feet in height. The layout plan and section one of the report detail the position of the antennae. The application has been called in by Councillor Ritchie to allow the committee to consider visual. You've gone. Nice buffering. Go there. Bernard, it's Ian Henderson. Bernard, are you happy to continue the run through the report? Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I see David's having a few problems with his computer this morning. So hopefully you were able to see the uh, the photographs that I was sharing there, uh, showing the, the three masts, uh, which are fairly, um, well, they are slim, uh, slim masts, um, fairly lightly coloured. Uh, running through the report, uh, you'll see that the application, as David mentioned, uh, has been called in. Have I gone? Yes. You're back on, David. I, I don't Sorry. Know. You want to pick right. up? I don't know if I, the the computer's gone mad. I'm, I I I do apologise. I don't know where 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 we got to. Uh, David, I would suggest that in case it happens again, we just leave Bernard to move your uh, move your report. Speak to your report. Ben, okay. are you quite happy with that? Yes, that's that's fine. Can you just uh, sorry, give me a moment while I just pull up the uh, the report in front of me. So sorry, convener. Yes, uh, as you'll see, uh, it is a retrospective application that we received uh, for these masts. Um, running through the report. You'll see that the application has been called in uh, by Councillor Ritchie uh, to allow members to consider the visual impact on neighbouring residents. Uh, there are also concerns raised by objectors in relation to interference with electrical equipment uh, in the neighbours' properties. And just for a point of clarification, the issue about electrical interference is not a planning consideration. Uh, that wouldn't be a legitimate planning reason to. Uh, to reject this application. Um, so really the issues, the planning issues are in relation to the, the scale and appearance of these masts. Uh, running through the report, you'll see that environmental protection uh, raised no objections to the application. Uh, the representations we received, the five received, are listed in section six of the report uh, with an explanation of the issues raised there. The report then goes on to detail that this application should be assessed against policy HC08, which relates to residential extensions and alterations. Uh, turning to the conclusion, you'll see that the officer's view is that with regard to the, the scale uh, and form of these masks, given that they are slim line features, they are lightly coloured, uh, we feel it's appropriate to recommend approval for this application. Uh, for the reasons as detailed in the report. Thank you, convener. Okay, thanks very much. Any comments from the floor? Thanks for Blackwood. Thanks, Mr. Kilas. A couple of questions. I know Bernard just said that uh, interference of uh, Wi-Fi and that is a material consideration. However, at 7B9, you've said that there is no evidence so if it's not material consideration, why are you even looking to see if there's evidence of the interference? I, I, I think the, the comment in the report there, Councillor, is that um, this, I, I take your point, I mean, it isn't a material consideration, so it's not for us to take a view as to whether there is or isn't. Uh, I suppose what's indicated in the report is that uh, even though it isn't a material planning consideration, uh, no definitive evidence has been provided to us. So the, the, the other tenants had 
gave no uh, evidence that they were they were because if they're obviously complaining they're getting interference they gave yeah. no evidence no support no evidence this uh the comment there is that uh there is no evidence that we have uh to justify or to, to demonstrate that uh, it is causing an interference but that yeah. said even if it was able to be demonstrated that isn't an, itch, an issue for the council to consider in its assessment of the planning application another question is in the the mast extends to a height of 40 feet, 42 feet, and 50 feet in height. This has been confirmed by the planning case officer. And then the planning case officer says uh, that the antenna do not extend to between 40 and 50 feet in height. This has not at any time been confirmed by the planning case officer. So what height are they, are they, what height do they go up to? If... The, the heights are indicated in the, uh, the paragraph or section one of the report. So you see paragraph 4. Point, uh, sorry, 1.4 and 1.5 uh, detail the heights of the mass. Okay, thank you. Can I ask uh, if Ofcon would be a legitimate organisation to uh, answer any points with regards to interference? I know it's not planning consent per se, uh, but it is something that they we as local local councillors should be aware of and should be looking to protect as much as possible the rights of our, our constituents. And that's um, the, 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 I'm not saying that there is a problem here. I'm yeah. not saying there isn't. I, I'm just wondering if uh, organisations like Ofcon would have been contacted. Either by the, I think the uh, David has his hand up, if, if you'd mind, if he could come back in on that point. Okay, surely. Uh, for, <clears throat> Thank you, Kibir. I think I've sorted my problems out. Uh, can everyone hear me now, yes? Yeah, it's uh, much stronger. Uh, I think uh, Section 7B15 and 7B16 of, of the report, that's why that part's in there. That uh, clarifies that it's the Radio Society of Great Britain who control the use of and the frequencies used. So that 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 would be a principal uh, body to approach. Anyone else? Convener, can you see the pictures? Yeah. I, I take it there are pictures of them. Can you see them? Councillor Bruce, yeah. There were pictures. Can you get the back up? Go with me. Go with me. I'll just share those, uh, Councillor. You can see that the first photograph shows mass one. Uh, hopefully, you can see it's a very slim line mass that I'm just hovering over with the cursor. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, that's a photograph of the second mass. Again, you can see where I'm hovering the cur cursor. Uh, that's, that's showing that mass. And the third mass, again, I'm hovering the cursor over. Uh, just showing that. Would you like me to go back over the photographs again? No, or that's those? fine. That's fine. I can, I can, well, I, I can see them. The, uh, it looks like a two-inch diameter pipe, basically. Yeah. Comments. The door. Okay. Sorry. Yes, uh, convener. Um, I can understand why per people perceive there's a, a health issue because we went out in so many uh, applications for mobile mass, which are far more visible, and we a lot of antenna dishes on them, and it's clear from the big companies that that turn around and say there is no proven health risk. So. We know that, but I can understand why the the neighbours have maybe heard rumours that there are health risks. But um, we're well aware that we've heard it all the times that no evidence is made. As for the height, we see from the 40s there are six feet fence, and clearly it doesn't. The mass didn't go five times more than the 
the height of the fence. So I would say they're well under 40, 40 feet, 40, 50 feet. But um, as I says, I don't see any reason. Obviously, visual impact isn't a material consideration, and there is very little um, visual impact, and no other issues have been identified, as the planning officer says. So once again, we we get to a thing where you know we should support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor McHugh. Uh, just to clarify, and could be a visual impact is a material consideration, and it's considered uh, in this case that there's no significant uh, visual impact. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify, Councillor, Con thank you. Convener, I know visual impact in, in a normal planning application, isn't it? We hear that visual impact is an impact when you go into um, windmills, for example, and we know that the Scottish Government isn't supported. Any visual impact objection to any windmill in Scotland, right? Even although okay, so McClark, there is no McClarky. doubt you can see the windmill. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, windmills are known people's back gardens, as far as I'm aware as yet. But I was just wanting to highlight the fact that I have a real issue with retrospect planning applications, as I've uh, highlighted in the past. Now, surely it would have been a far better idea for the, uh, the the person to go and speak to his neighbours when he was thinking about putting these up instead of putting them up, and then we have the the the, the fallout of the impact it could be having on the neighbours. I understand that we don't; it's not a planning um, issue that they have been affected. Uh, their their possible TVs, broadband. You know, we've had problems this, this morning with, with people's broadband, and it is becoming a huge issue, which is having an impact on people's lives round about. And if these, although it's not a planning application, and I understand that, if it is having an impact, then that would have been sorted out prior to them going ahead and putting these up. So um, my question obviously would have been, you know, has there been a, a, an environmental impact assessment being done? But you know, as 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 we're saying here, it's it's no part of a planning application, so we, we can't bring the, the, this application to a harmonious end because we have got neighbours saying that they are being infected by this. You know, which is having a knock-on effect on their their uh, life and uh, their environment. So, with that view, I would m move to refuse this application. Okay, yeah, yeah. Convener, can I just come in on that point in response to the? Uh... The, the question raised there by uh, Council McHugh, and just mm -hmm. hopefully maybe give a, a bit of clarification. Um, Council McHugh, I mean it's it's a it's a good point you make there, and I can understand uh, the concerns that have been raised by neighbour neighbours uh, if this is causing some interference. Um, whilst we've said that from a planning point of view, uh, that issue is not a material planning consideration, um, as detailed within the report. There are other avenues open to the um, to the neighbours uh, to deal with that issue. So, although whilst the council can't control that through the planning process, uh, there are other avenues. And as you'll appreciate, uh, a planning permission doesn't um, doesn't grant all consents that may be required. Um, if there are other permissions needed or other approvals required, uh, that is a separate issue. Uh, a planning permission would not um, take away the need. Uh, for somebody to seek those approvals. Uh, Appreciate also, that. Just in terms of uh, retrospective applications, just to clarify, uh, I can understand that um, retrospective applications uh, are an issue of concern, and obviously it's not um, it's not something we would uh, we would encourage people to do uh, to put uh, carry out development without the necessary planning permission having been obtained first. So you'll, you'll know that there's a variety of reasons why people go ahead and build things without planning permission. Uh, it can be intentional, uh, but it can also be through ignorance. Uh, you'll you'll appreciate that the planning system is not the um, it's not the easiest bit of legislation to to get your head around and understand. Uh, so it's it's not unusual that uh, there will be occasions where people do things out of out of ignorance. Uh, I don't know if that's the case in this instance. Uh, but just to say, if that could be borne in mind. Thank Can you. Can I make convener. a suggestion? Sorry, I knew where I was. I thought you were finished. I have. Thank you, convener. Yeah. Make a suggestion that uh, we carry forward this report. 
and uh, give the the objectors and the applicant opportunity to, to approach Ofcon to get the assurances that they, they, they need uh, with regards to interference in their uh, uh, televisions and etc. And uh, that way we may actually help achieve the 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 the, the, the result that Council McHugh is looking for. I'm happy. I'm I'm happy with that convener. I was going to move acceptance, but I'm happy with that that we we continue and let other discussions go. But um, come back to us, you know, once um, these discussions have been made to see if there's any progress. Um, uh, convener, I'll second your motion. Okay, there's a suggestion. Convener, I would, convener, I would move. I would move that grant it because, in all honesty, we're we're seeing here that. And the fact that it's a right respective application, um, that that shouldn't have been done in the first place. But Bernard Butler has has said, and he's right, it's a complicated process. But I would move that we grant the the application. Can I clarify just just one thing you you are discussing here? Um, in my presentation, that unfortunately you weren't able to hear, I did say that the uh, as I saw from the case, the applicant was not aware of the need to get. Plan person, but was but did so when he was advised. Okay, that's a fair, fair point. To clarify that aspect of it. The uh, Vera, could ask a quick question. Surely. <clears throat> What's been said by Councillor McHugh there all seems to be there are no material considerations. So where do we go with us? Extending it to come back and say. Wi-Fi, etc., are no material considerations, and I don't know where we're going with it. As you're probably aware, Council, about the, the council is responsible for a, a great many TV aerials, and so therefore there's, there's a precedent in terms of uh, our, our ability uh, to to uh, place aerials that uh, are, are acceptable to us, uh, or replace aerials that uh, are defective. In some way, uh, with with new aerials, and uh, that's because we have departments cooperating with each other, and this is one example where I think we could extend that even further, and have a the uh, a uh, have the uh, this particular issue picked up addressed to everyone's satisfaction. I think if we can do that. The more happy constituents we have, the better. Convener, could I ask legal to clarify that we have grounds to do that? I mean, we now I'm happy to try to go and try to get um, agreement. Can I hang with this? Because I don't see the reason for thinking, but you know, content for you would have made a fail. But are we have we got justification, legal justification to do what Councillor um, Alexander is suggesting um, for the legal side? Ian? Thank you, convener, and thank you, Councillor McClucky. Uh, I would agree with the, the planning officers that this particular aspect is not uh, a material planning consideration in the determination of the application. But nevertheless, in seeking a continuation for further information of this nature, if that assists the committee in taking a decision based on planning considerations, then it's within uh, the, the purview of the committee to ask for that. But yes, I would say that if you were refusing the application simply on that ground, then it may be a more problematic matter that could potentially lead to a challenge and maybe an appeal to the Scottish ministers. But uh, there's nothing to stop the committee in uh, seeking a continuation to another day to seek further information of this nature. Thanks, Councillor McClucky. I hope that's of some help. So the fact is, can we all get the environmental health to, to look at this and as a different avenue? I mean, is that not the best source of this? And take it the the plan the planning is only here for planning. I mean, uh, licensing is a separate body from a uh, from planning as well. You know, what I mean, there's there's other bodies, but we're here to make a planning decision. Um, um, you know, that's that's problems. Yeah. I'm happy if there's a justification to do it, but I'm a bit concerned if we've not got a reason to to refuse it if it came back up, then why are we can 
the why we, we continue it. That's 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 the the thing we you know if. Uh, yeah, you, you you're correct, uh, Councillor Clarkey, in, in the planning terms. But of course, the council is responsible for for all more than just planning issues, and the the I see this as as, as part of the, that that particular wider aspect of of uh, council involvement, and that would include environmental health. Can, can we, that, if you may, may be asking you that I'm not trying to catch anybody out, please believe me, but you just said that there isn't a plan and there are no planning grounds to refuse it. No, I never said that. I think, I think maybe you did or you inferred it. I didn't. Oh. Ian? Thank you. Convener and Councillor Goldie, it was just to, to clarify that point in case I had created a, a misunderstanding there. Uh, the, the point I was trying to make earlier when I spoke is that uh, the the issue of interference is not a material planning consideration. And I think if that was perhaps the sole ground on which a refusal was to be agreed by the committee, then I would suspect that the applicant would uh, appeal the decision to the Scottish ministers uh, on the grounds that it wasn't a material planning consideration. Uh, in fact, just picking up on a point that I thought may be interesting to, to capture, there was discussion earlier over uh, visual amenity and how that relates as a material consideration. And I think it's probably worthwhile and perhaps the planners would come in just trying to clarify that matter because it can sometimes be slightly confusing. And the, it's, uh, it's not a material planning consideration for private interests, such as a landowner losing a desirable view from their property to be taken into account. However, visual amenity and the impact on visual amenity of a development to the surrounding area can be a material planning consideration. So I see David Patterson has his hand up at the moment and I don't know, convener, if you'd be happy for David to come in at that point. David? Uh, thank you, convener. That, that's a good point, Ian. Um, you see from section 74 of the report, uh, refers to planning advice note 62, radio telecommunications, and it's that planning advice note that that sets out the tests for such uh, for such equipment as as is proposed here. That provides uh, guidance on radio telecommunications, which includes private radio communication equipment, and the plan sets out very clearly that the visual impact is is the principal, in fact, only planning consideration and the test is uh, the contrast of the equipment against the background colour, including property and the sky. And as Bernard pointed out earlier, uh, you again, it's something you missed from, from my presentation, unfortunately, the, the antennae are, are slim in width and light in colour, and there's no significant contrast against background colour. So the proposal meets the terms of the planning advice note, and planning, but the planning advice note makes clear that that is the only test of the, the proposal uh, in, in planning terms. That that's the planning consideration. Indeed, and that may well be the conclusion that the council, the, the committee would reach, whether it be today or whether it be in a month's time. But in a month's time, we, hopefully, we have. Some information from all clients, and we have some information from our environment, environment. and they uh, also we we'll check in to see what other involvement the council has in resolving this. Thanks, Lakia. Uh, thanks, Convener. Uh, I've listened to various uh, councillors and listened to their views. I I'm I'm probably in the same mind as Councillor Goldie. There's no planning material consideration regarding uh, that will refuse us. So I would second Councillor Goldie's motion of the recommendations by the officers. Thank you. Ian. 
Thank you, convener, with with your leave. I think there's sometimes a concern about procedural um, decisions as against substantive decisions on an application. And what we have at the moment is we have a motion by Councillor Alexander, seconded by Councillor Hughes, to continue the application to allow the applicant and objectors uh, to approach the appropriate regulatory body for further information and environmental health involvement. Uh, now, I would have some concern of pitting against that as a, an amendment, one to, to grant permission. What I would suggest is that perhaps if a member was minded to, to move uh, almost the contrary as a procedural motion to Councillor Alexander's one that we continue or the committee continues to consider the application at this meeting. So it would allow a decision to be taken on continuation as a first point. And then we could continue the discussion over the actual planning merits of the, the application and development before us. Uh, is that something that members would be agreeable to? Yeah, I wonder if that have heard Mr. Henderson, I didn't, I personally, I'm not really entirely sure what he's saying, to be honest. Would he prefer me to say that uh, the amendment to say that I move the direct negative? Thank you, Councillor Goldie. In, in effect, what I'm, I'm trying to do is separate a procedural decision, which is continuing the matter from a decision on the substance of the application, i.e. Yeah, whether... But I, yeah, but could I just say that, and I, I wouldn't want to be, I'm not trying to be rude, honestly, but uh, the motion's quite clear in my mind, and I'm clear also in my mind that I think it should be granted. So it's either a, a, a for or against, as far as I can see. And if, if, it, if the, for instance, if the amendment wins, that's the end of the story. That's as far as I can see. I, I, I think there is no grounds to do that. And I think I heard earlier, maybe even from yourself and from officers, there are no planning grounds to, to refuse it. So if there's no planning grounds to refuse it, why the heck are we going to refuse it? It's maybe me that put the cats amongst the pigeons there. That. I thought it was a motion by Councillor Goldie, but it was an amendment. So. Yeah. I would second the amendment by Mr. Councillor <coughs> Goldie. Thank you. Thank you. I, see, I seem to confuse the mutes there. I mean, that, it, obviously, in the, the, the hands of the committee and members uh, on this, uh, my suggestion was simply that there be a procedural decision, a, a sort of preliminary procedural decision taken on whether or not to continue and then move forward to, to have a further debate on the merits of the application. But uh, I think what I'm hearing is that we've got a motion by Councillor Alexander, seconded by Councillor Hughes, to continue the application to allow discussions to take place uh, by the applicants with the appropriate regulatory body and also for information back from environmental health. And then we have an amendment uh, by Councillor Goldie, seconded by Councillor Kerr, and that is to, to grant permission for the application. Yeah, happy to, to go to the vote. Convener, I've had my hand up for quite a wee while before, before Mr. Henderson spoke. Um, oh, it's still alive, and so, yeah, so in fact, I think Alan actually had his hand up before me. So I'm quite happy to let Alan go first. Okay, Alan, and then yourself, okay. Gary. I'll, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be quick, Convener. Can I just start off by saying that actually I share the, the views of Councillor McHugh in, the, in the, regard to the retrospective planning process. Uh, the only problem is, until such time as the planning legislation has changed, we are left to deal with these sort of situations. So we have to manage them and deal with them as best as uh, as we can. Just a, a question regarding the, the aerial and the sighting of the, the aerial. Now, obviously, I'm not technical uh, in any respect with regard to this, but normal television aerials are usually sighted on the gable end of properties. Is this something that could be done with these type of aerials? Could they be fixed to the gable end of properties? And that would take away quite a bit of the, the visual problems, I would imagine. Having said that, it might be reception issues uh, if it's different bandwidths that uh, these aerials work with. But uh, I'm looking for some comments just on that, convener. Thank you, 
but I'm not sure if David's trying to speak there. Are you on mute, David? Yeah, the uh... okay, sir. Uh, I, I take your point. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no reason why these masks can't be attached to the gable end of of houses. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not sure whether that's something that the applicants act, actually considered. Uh, As I said, this really is down to the this is what's proposed in this case. I just I know I've seen properties in the past where these radio aerials have been fixed to the side of the house. Uh, and obviously the, the work uh, or they wouldn't be sighted there in the first place. So it's maybe something for the applicant to consider. Come back with a fresh application. Yeah, if I could just if I could just come in on that, um, we're, we're considering the or the committee have been asked to consider the, the application that's before them, which is for the masks that are there in the positions that are indicated. Um, there may well be other other locations in which the masks could be cited. Um, that would be an issue for the applicant to to consider, uh, but would require a, a separate further planning application. Mm. Mr. Yeah, thank you, convener. Um, I know that in 4.1 environmental health unit is read no objection. Any potential noise and contamin issue, contamination issues could be addressed by means of informatives. There aren't any informatives on the back end of this. I think uh, uh, just to clarify that, Councillor. Um... It's noted that the environmental protection unit has advised that, but there's no such impacts envisaged, and there's no such impacts from the the development. Hence, there's no informative. Okay, it just seems strange that it said any potential noise contamination. So, if there's a potential for noise contamination, um, could be addressed. Could could be addressed. Um, by I'm oh, sorry, any potential noise and contamination issues could be addressed by means of informatives. It's, it's, it's not. They're not saying there aren't any in in, in item four point one. Convener, we've not got an environmental health boy here. I mean, surely we can get one in the line. You know that we could answer that. Um, it used to be that they came to every plan of meet. Certainly, were were just online, so it's no. Inconvenient. Mm, yeah. Just a suggestion, convener. It's your, your, you're in charge of the meeting, convener. I'm not. I'm sorry. I was only making a, a point there. I'm no trying. So his suggestion you've made, and, and uh, I, I don't think it's practical in this this, this case. Bernard, you're about to say something. It was just a comment on the point that made there by Councillor Clucky. Uh, yes, we would normally have uh, an environmental health officer available at the meeting. Unfortunately, because of uh, absences, we're not able to have somebody here today. Um, they did. They were obviously were asked for comments on the applications prior to the meeting, uh, and in this particular case, the response was that they had no comments on this application. Uh, it wasn't raising any concerns for the environmental protection unit. Okay. I, I appreciate that, Bernard, but but that's not what four point one says. I. I take your point, Councillor Bowes, there that it does make reference to any potential noise and contamination issues could be addressed by means of informatives. Uh, perhaps that could have been better worded. Uh, Is that something I, then that obviously could then be dealt with if we did do a continuation to get that accurate? Uh, well, it says there uh, by means of informatives. Uh, I suppose what I'd recommend would be that if members are minded to grant permission in accordance with the um, the recommendation. And informatives could be added uh, to the decision uh, to cover those points. Well, that would be dealt with by the mover of the amendment in conjunction with uh, yeah. the officers. Bernard, as I say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm tricky, but if we know what the informatives are, because there may be physical restraints or things like that to be done, it may change the look of the actual mass. Um, it's more, it's more the concern about that. That it get, it still only gives me a question. On that. Also, the, the informatives that environmental protection uh, use, you, you probably have seen from other uh, decision notices, are standard informatives in relation to to uh, noise 
uh, they're generally in relation to the hours of any construction work. Uh, in relation to contamination, it's to do with any disturbance of ground. Now, obviously, in this case, uh, it's a retrospective application uh, whereby if there has been any uh, any earthworks uh, to put the mass in, uh, that's already happened. Uh, likewise, in, in terms of noise, uh, personally, uh, it's not clear to me uh, what noise impacts the uh, the mass would have. Um, now, it's not an indication there that, to say, any potential, so if there was a potential, um, they're suggesting that it could be covered by an informative. Uh, so I'm not recommending that there should be any conditions imposed. Um, so it would be a kind of, again, out with the planning process that would be an informative uh, to be considered in relation to environmental health. Okay. That aside of that, Councillor Bruce? Mostly. Right. <laughs> Let's take that out of the decision. The, uh, there's no one else. Can we go to the vote? Thank you. Convener, so we have a motion by your good self, Councillor Alexander, seconded by Councillor Hughes, and that was to continue the application uh, in order to allow the applicant and the objectors to approach the appropriate regulatory body uh, for further information and also for officers to bring back information from the environmental health section. There was then an amendment by Councillor Goldie, which was seconded by Councillor Kerr, and that was to grant uh, permission in accordance with officer recommendations. Uh, so running through by way of a roll call, Councillor Alexander. For the motion. Provost Buchanan. Amendment. Councillor Blackwood. Amendment. Councillor Bowes. Motion. Councillor Goldie. Amendment. Councillor Hughes. A motion. Councillor Kerr. Amendment. Councillor McHugh. For the motion. Councillor McClucky. Amendment. Councillor Murta. Motion. Councillor Nicol. The amendment. And Councillor Nimmo. Amendment. Thank you. Thank you. We have five votes for the motion, seven votes for the amendment, and the amendment is duly carried. Thank you, convener. Okay, thanks, colleagues. Uh, item eight uh, is the port down application. I believe that there's a, a deputation being requested. Are members happy to hear the, the deputation? Agreed. 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 Okay. Agreed. Mr. Dillon. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. Uh, can you hear and see me okay? It's the first time I've used this. I apologise. That's okay. The, uh, yes, I can hear you and can, can see you as well. Brilliant. The, uh, I've, has the, the procedures for a, a deputation been explained to you? Yes, they have been. Thank you. That's fine. Okay, we well have ten minutes uh, uh, from from now uh, to to give you a case. Super. Um, well, good morning, all, and thank you for affording me the opportunity to comment on behalf of this application. Um, I'd just like to give some background information on this application, just to give it a little bit of context for you all. Uh, the proposed site is actually the former four in one head office in Port Downey, which was used by my late father's business, which was four in one. Um, the site was used for food manufacture, distribution, and offices, and it's no longer operational. Before the, sorry, before the financial crash in 2008, there were plans, which I'm sure many of you may be aware of, and even directly involved in yourselves for the development of the Port Downey area. The plans were for a large marina, housing, restaurants, shops, etc. Pre-2008, there were discussions between Scottish Canals and my father, as at the time they were interested in acquiring the site. Post 2008, everything changed for obvious reasons. 
Having myself started Candid in 2017, I've now set up head office in Ellsgate Park um, in Grangemouth. And in 2008, we relocated here, sorry, 2018 rather, we relocated here and did all our main centralised operations from this site. At the time, it was in my mind to redevelop my father's old factory through either refurbishment or a complete new build, which would better suit the needs for the growing aspirations of Candied. So I was thinking offices, manufacture of our ice cream, distribution, but I also wanted to add a retail element potentially to the site. Um, effectively the same model as my father's, but for desserts with the additional retail element. Now, as I knew there were plans for Fort Downey with Scottish Canals, I contacted them when I moved here in 2018 and I invited Stephen Smith, who's the development manager for Scottish Canals to Grangemouth to meet with me and I give us an opportunity, A, for me to discuss my plans and to get a better understanding of their plans for the area. I wanted to try and determine if they were interested in the site or if it's something that's out with their aspirations. The last thing I wanted to do was invest lots of time, money, energy um, into my project, but not then to be compatible with what they had for a vision for the community and also if it wasn't compatible with Falkirk Council's vision for the area and potentially a forced sale further down the line, which would just not be in anyone's interest. At the time, Stephen said he had no plans or desire for that site whatsoever, and it wasn't in their, their plan or their future plans that they had. So then I began to speak to Adam at Arca Architects, who was responsible for submitting our application, and we came up with the proposal and submitted the application. Now, we then were contacted by Chris Breslin, who's the head of regeneration and development for Scottish Canals, having seen our application, and he wanted to discuss it. Now, personally, I was very excited at this because I thought, right, this could be something that could be a collaboration between Scottish Canals, ourselves and the council to come up together um, and potentially come up with some proposals that would suit everyone's needs. I saw the collaboration, I saw encouraging people to come down, enjoy the waterside, enjoy the recreational space and the facilities that would be surrounding there. We initially had a Zoom meeting with Chris and Fiona McFadden, who's the head of estates for Scottish Canals. And they said, whilst they thought the idea of the parlour was brilliant along the canal because it would help support trips and bits and pieces and give people somewhere to go, they felt it wasn't in keeping with their plans. So we went away from that meeting, set up another one, and Adam came up with a new proposal, which was effectively, what he did was he did a new drawing which separated the candid operation rather than in one building, he separated it into two. So he split our operation and created a, a piazza, if you like, down the middle of the property because we felt that what that would do is it would bring the old iron brew factory where the main majority of regeneration was going on with Scottish canals. It would effectively bring that closer to the front of the canal, create a nice walkthrough for people getting off boats, able to walk through the middle of our site with our parlour on one side, our factory on the other, create a seating area and just pull everything in together so it was a nice um, recreational space for everyone. Um, and they said that they liked that. And um, we said the only thing that we would need is that we would require a little bit of access of their land to the rear of our property for deliveries, etc., because we'd allocated so much space for the piazza, which would assist everyone. Um, and they said that they wouldn't be able to do that for us. Um, I must admit, I felt very discouraged after that because I felt like we were coming up with some workable solutions, some ideas, some proposals in the interest of the community, Scottish Canals and ourselves, um, and we weren't really getting anywhere. So I was a little bit discouraged after that meeting. So we went away um, and then we had a third meeting and I basically just said, look, this has been dragging on for a while now. Um, if you're not happy with our proposal, you're not putting any of your own forward, then I suggested, look, would you purchase the site from me? and I'll move on and I'll find somewhere else. But it's one of those where I can't stay frozen to the ground in the hope that you guys are gonna to come to the table and do a deal. Um, I need to be able to move on with the business and my plans that I have. But if you want the site, you know, let's give me a reasonable offer for it. I'm not gonna nail anyone to the wall. That's not what we're here to do. Um, make me a reasonable offer and then we can both move on. They said that they didn't have any money um, and that they're waiting for funding, etc. So I said, okay, that's fine. If you can't afford to buy it, then why don't we lease it long term, take it for 10 years, and then maybe when your financial situation improves or whatever, but at least you've secured the site and it will help with your cash flow because obviously it's going to be a significantly reduced amount of money every year on an ongoing basis. And, uh, and then you can do what you want with it in time. 
and that didn't meet with their approval either. So I just felt, well, we're offering alternatives and solutions and possibilities, but nothing we're coming up with meets with your proposal, um, but you're not actually coming up with any alternatives either. So it was it was a little bit frustrating, if I'm honest. Um, so they said they would come back to us after that meeting. Um, Adam sent three subsequent emails, multiple calls uh, to get in touch with Chris, and the trail just went cold, and we didn't hear anything back from them at all. Um, and I was disappointed because I really wanted to work with Scottish Canals on this. I thought that um, it would be something that, that would be a great project for everyone. Now, I understand that the application has uh, has got some parking um, concerns, which is why it's been recommended for refusal. I think the main one, and you, I think you'll know more about this than I do, but the main one is the, is the parking. Um, now, there is a huge car park beside the War Memorial, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, I've been going to Port Downey since I was a child, since my dad had that site pretty much every day as a child. Um, and I've never seen it, never seen it full at all. Um, so I would like to think that's an area that we can use. But also the mix of our business has changed. Um, since COVID, obviously, when we were delivery only, we were going to customers now recognise that our stores are open again. But many people's spending habits that um, that they'd started to use during COVID are now, have now been adopted long term as well, I feel. And certainly the proportion of our deliveries of us going to customers rather than customers coming to us has definitely increased. Um, and, and moreover, I think that that area of Port Downey as well, if, if everyone's aspirations are for it to be a recreational space, which I think it is, for people to cycle, to walk, for families to spend time. You know, I'm envisaging a lot of people coming down on foot or, or cycling rather than, than coming down in cars, etc. Um, so yeah, you know, I've got visions of boat trips along the canal, stopping off for refreshments, family days, taking trips along the canal from the wheel all the way past the distillery and down to the Kelpies. Parents driving their children to behave on the boat trip with the promise of a candid on the return. Um, you know, people hopping off the boats and literally walking 10 metres from the front of the canal side straight into our front door. Um, I think it will be a great addition to the businesses along the canal. It will help promote the canal usage. Um, and an investment in what is one of Falkirk's best selling points, which is the canal regeneration. Um, I think our site will bring prosperity, prosperity and an energy to Port Downey that it's been lacking. Um, we'll be creating six new jobs immediately for the factory, um, that's straight away, and uh, 12 for the retail unit. You know, so there's significant job opportunities there as well as our business grows. Every new store we open employs between 10 and 12 staff. Uh, we've currently got over 50, we're only four years old. Um, we've got three sites just now, another one opening in Stennis Muir in, in just under two weeks. Um, and I can't grow my business where I am just now because we've outgrown the space. It's just not large enough for me, unfortunately. Um, and I've got exciting growth plans to invest more time, money, opportunities into the Falkirk area, but I need a better facility in order to do that in some way that's central. And uh, Port Downey is perfect for us because we've got stores in Stennismuir, Denny, Rumford and Grangemouth, and Port Downey is just slap bang in the middle of all of that, which is brilliant. Um, and I think there's possibly a bit of nostalgia there as well, creating a new legacy on the, the ground that my father created a legacy on. So maybe there's some nostalgia there as well. Um, I'm also a qualified Royal Environmental Health Institute of Scotland trainer. So I undergo a lot of um, health certificates for people. Um, and I do that without any cost to the people at all. Um, I'm the trainer for Strathcarran, so I do all their kitchen staff, all their um, cafe, volunteer staff, etc. So it's a great, a great facility to have people to come down there and get these certificates. And they also help people get into employment and give them better opportunities as well. In closing, councillors, this site needs attention. I think we're all, those of you who are familiar with it, knows that that, needs, that building needs attention. Um, and if this application is unsuccessful, then I'll need to do something with it. Um, and then I would plan to refurb what is already there under the current granted usage, which is distribution, food manufacture and offices. Um, and it just means I won't get my retail element, which is the element that I really, really like. Um, but I would like to think a purpose-built building would be better for everyone um, because these you know, purpose-built ones are, are subject to more scrutiny and regulation and representation, which is, is the right way. Um, the new build would cost approximately half a million pounds, and that's half a million pounds of investment in local suppliers, builders, businesses, so many other people will be pulling into this project um, for the benefit of the area and the people. Um, I'd just like to add that we're a young business, a new business, and we are very grateful for the success we've had so far in the last four years. 
through the support of the people of Falkirk, Candy's managed to donate over £50,000 to charitable organisations in the Falkirk district, with Strathcarran being the main beneficiary. And I want to continue this great work. Um, and I want to continue to grow the business, create opportunities for young people um, and reinvest in our community. But I can't do it on my own. And I, I, I'm at your mercy and I need your help. Um, and that's everything I've got to say on the application. I'd welcome any questions or any queries that you may have. Thank you. You're on mute, convener. <coughs> Still can't hear you, convener. Still on mute, convener. Yeah, apologies for that. Uh, you're not the only one that's having problems with IT this morning, Mr. Dillon. The, uh, can, can I can I ask if there are any questions for for the applicant? Yeah, yeah. Can we? Uh... You're on mute, Dennis. Can you can hear you, Mr. Goldie? Okay. Apologies, uh, can we? Uh... Oh, I don't have a question on it, but. I've probably got more knowledge of the site than any other person on the planning committee. Can I stop uh, you? These are comments that you can make when the officers have introduced the report. At this point, I'm looking for questions for Mr. Dillon. Oh, I apologise, Convener. Quite right. Anyone? It's okay. Thank you. Thanks, Convener. Uh, Mr. Dillon. On your, on your, uh, uh, your presentation, you highlighted that the existing building has uh, class six storage, class four office, and there was another one, distribute class six, uh, six distribution. Am I right in saying what you, what you say was if you weren't successful, you would refer the, the existing building to what you've already got? Uh, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, obviously subject to, to building warrants, etc. Um, but yeah, my plan would then have to be, um, reluctantly would have to be to, to refurb the property and have it out occupied as a a head office for Candied, um, but without the retail element. So yes, manufacture of our ice cream, the distribution, the storage, and and the offices for Candied, but without the retail element. Um, so yeah, that would certainly be my my plan B. So what we're looking, what you're looking for is an extra class for retail. That that's essentially the only difference between what's there and what I'm proposing is to um, is to get that that small area of retail so that we can. Um, we can assist and serve people in the community that are using the canal. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. Thanks, Convener. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Blackwood? Yeah. Mr. Dillon, you, you mentioned well, one of the major problems is parking. And you said there's parking available, available at the War Memorial in Camlin. I, I assume that's public parking. Yes, Councillor, I mean, I'm not entirely sure about who owns it, um, the ground. I think it's Falker Council, of uh, uh, my knowledge, but certainly it's public parking, it's community parking. I would suggest that our business is part of that community as well for serving it. Um, you, you know, how, how many people are going to come to an ice cream parlour with their cars? It's um, it's one of them. We To give you a comparison, for instance, we've got sites at Grangemouth at Central Avenue, we've got sites at uh, Rumford and at Denny, I think Rumford and, and certainly Greenwood are good comparisons because you know they're, they're, they're busy little parades and certainly Central Avenue. We all know. Well, I'd like to think we all know how busy Central Avenue can be, and I've never had an issue there with any parking or any congestion or or people complaining that Candy's uh, causing issues for the local community in terms of parking. And our our site is directly on a bus stop as well, and we still manage to have people come to us without causing 
massive disruption in the local area. But it's one of the problems, no parking for your workforce. Potentially it could be, but there's, um, you know, if we've got people that are there, we can have car pulling, we can have people sharing, you know, there's good bus routes, all these kind of things as well. I think, I mean, for instance, now when we're at Grangeworth, where I am just now, there are four of us here just now and three of them cycle to work every day. Um, you know, so these kind of things that are great that people are, are using their bicycles, they're using buses, they're using public transport because the links are so good now as well. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Mr. Right, thanks, Kevin. Uh, hey, Mr. Dillon, uh, uh, you you went on a lot there about your family history in the area, and I would say we, we acknowledge that, and that's why the the three members caught a street after your family just recently up in in, in Madison. So, um, I'd like to acknowledge that we're well aware of your um your family history and and accept uh, that. The the issue with parking, it, it says in the report that you did do a parking kind of study showing that there was parking uh, in the area. Could you maybe elaborate a wee bit on that, please? I think Adam at Arthur had just had a look around, um, and I did, because Adam lives literally just um, probably four or five hundred metres from the site as well, so he's well well aware of the local area. Um, and he just felt that the park, the car park directly in front of the Union Inn would serve to 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 do um, would serve our property. And also, I think just to come back to Council Blackwood's point as well, which I think is relevant for you as well, uh, Council McLucky, is that a lot of our staff, um, certainly in the parlours, tend to be um, sort of high school, so they're maybe doing two or three shifts a week while they're in full time education. This is the, the part time job adds value to their life in general. Um, and a lot of them are maybe 16 or 17 and don't have their own vehicle. So a lot of them are getting dropped off by their parents at, you know, four or five o'clock when the shift starts and then they're getting picked up at eight, nine o'clock when they're finishing. So uh, the, the um, I think the visualisation of perhaps there being lots of cars there for the people who work there is, is not necessarily um, always the case. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a lot of there's car park. Like whilst I recognise that it's public, public space, it's not mine. I absolutely recognise that. But I would like to think that if Candy's part of the community and part of the business, if we're providing a facility services for the community, then I would like to think we'd entitled to use part of it as well. Whilst I recognise we won't be using all of it, obviously, it's there for other people as well, but we're part of it. Thanks very much for that. The other point we make was um, obviously it'd be unlikely to get refused for a building warrant on an established business, but. Um, if you build a new, obviously the new building uh, fit for purpose, it would improve the carbon footprint of the area because I take it you would be building a, a, a building that is more compatible and more carbon neutral. Well, absolutely, Councillor. You know, that I think a lot of the scrutiny that new builds come under, um, a lot of people might complain about it. I'm all for it because at the end of the day, it's going to improve the area, it's going to improve the building, it's going to improve our contribution to our planet in general. Um, you know, whether it's solar panels or whatever else it happens to be, um, and all these improvements which the new build will be subject to may not necessarily carry through to the building warrant of the refurbishment, which I'd need to look more into it in, in detail. But I think I can say without fear of contradiction that we won't have to do as much for the, for the refurbishment or amendment to the current building than we would if we were building something brand new. Uh, my last point is obviously, you mentioned you're next door to the Union Inn, um, who was up in front of the licensing the other day, and I did quite a grill on the parking issue, which is a planning issue, it's not a parking issue, to say some questions on it. But officers did say that there was, uh, they'd never seen the parking in that area full, um, you know, so it did highlight that there is a uh, vacant, whether it's for the union and now yourself. Um, I would say, have you ever noticed that the parking is full at that area? Um, you know, obviously your business has been there so over mm -hmm. the years. We could, have you any comment on that? So, Councillor McLucky, my father purchased that, which was the old bakery back in 1995, and I spent a lot of time as a, as a child going there, working, etc., every single day, pretty much for probably almost 20 years. Um, and I can say um, confidently that I have never seen that car park full, except on one day a year, and it's usually Mariner's Day, 
because what happens is is that the horses and people who are involved in the parade uh, go down Port Downey, right down to the end of Scots, and they do all their preparation of their floats and bits and pieces. They used to do it directly in front of the four and one on the canal side. Um, and then that day, the car park's full, and that's on, on one morning for a couple of hours when it's uh, Manor's Day. Other than that, I can honestly say I've never seen it full, ever, in, in the history of being there. I thank you for your uh, knowledge and local knowledge. Thanks very much, Mr. Bill. Okay, can I ask the officer that is responsible for the application uh, to come forward? Thank you, Convener. Uh, I'm hoping that everyone can still hear me. The application site comprises of a disused former class food preparation and distribution building and associated service areas at Port Downey Falkirk, as Mr. Dillon has clarified already. The application proposes the demolition of the existing building and the erection of a mixed use building comprising class four office, class four light industrial, class three ice cream parlor, and class six storage and distribution uses. Parking would increase from the existing one space to six end on parking spaces, which would be formed partially on the public highway. See Bernard's going, going to go through the, the drawings and photographs uh, while I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, so that's good. The application has been called in by Councillor Kerr to allow the committee to consider parking issues. Section 3 of the report details the relevant planning history. The road development unit have advised that the road development would generate a parking requirement of 24 parking spaces. The proposed six species fall significantly short of that. Furthermore, it is noted that these six species would be formed partially on the public highway. The applicant would not have control over the use of the public highway to ensure dedicated use for the proposed development. The proposal is likely to encourage significant on-street and indiscriminate parking. The road development unit have accordingly advised that the proposal would not be in the best interest of road safety. Scottish Canals have commented on the proposal, proposal, reflecting comments of the Rose Development Unit. Furthermore, Scottish Canals have commented that the proposal is unlikely to integrate well with the wider area redevelopment pro proposed by, by the Port Downey Area of Major Change Mixed Use Proposal MU11 of the Development Plan, detailed in Section 7A2 of this report. Other consultation responses detailed in Section 4 of the report do not highlight any significant issues. Four letters of representation from the public have been received, neither supporting or objecting to the proposal. Issues raised include lack of, park, lack of a parking plan, lack of parking provision, potential parking issues adjacent to the Fourth and Clyde Canal. The issues raised are addressed in sections 7b9 and 7b10 of the report. Section 7A1 details the relevant development plan policies relevant to the proposal. The proposed development would not be satis satisfactorily self-contained in terms of access and parking. The proposal is likely to encourage the significant on-street and indiscriminate parking, which would not be in the, in the interest of road safety. The proposal would constitute overdevelopment of the application site. The proposal does not accord with the area of major change mixed use redevelopment proposal MU11 of the development plan, nor with policies PEO1 placemaking, JEO4 business development out with designated areas, JE10 food and drink, and IR11, IR09 parking. Accordingly, the proposal does not accord with the development plan. The application is supported by a parking statement stated that the wider area could sustain the parking requirement generated by the proposal and that national parking standards make provision for parking requirement reduction in town centre locations. The applicant would have no control over any parking provision in the wider area and could not secure use for the proposed development. The application site is not located within the Falkirk Town Centre as identified in the development plan. The issues raised by the applicant's parking statement are addressed in section 7B11 and 7B12 of the report. In summary, the proposed development of the site would be of a scale which cannot be self-contained in terms of access and parking. The proposal would like to encourage significant on-street and indiscriminate parking, which would not be in the best interest of road safety. The proposal constitutes overdevelopment of the application site. The proposal does not accord with the development plan 
and there are no material considerations. So if you justify setting aside the development plan in this case, it's recommended that the council committee refuse to grant plan vision for reasons detailed in section 9.1 of the report. Can I ask, uh, Amina, Mr. Dillon has raised uh, a few good points regarding to potential redevelopment of, of, of the site. And I have had since this application is a second submission of the same proposal, basically. The first application was withdrawn. Following the withdrawal of the first application, I had discussions with Mr. Dillon's agent, Mr. Tolman, about an alternative proposal for an ice cream parlour, which would include consumption uh, of food on the premises and a retail element to that. Those discussions, I have, I have to say, with the with Mr. Tolman, were very positive. I, obviously, I could not guarantee that anything would get planned permission. That's not within my grant. However, discussions were positive. Mr. Tolman drew up a, a draft proposal, which was uh, made into an inquiry. Uh, the I have to say the the, the alternative proposal. Uh, had significant design merit, and it included parking. What parking you could provide would be provided entirely within the application site and would not rely on the public highway. Uh, so, and the discussions were so positive that when the application, when this application was submitted, I was surprised that it was not for the alternative proposal. What was what was uh, discussed with the, the with Mr. Tolman was that such a proposal would not have another three uses uh, putting pressure on any space or parking. So, as I said, the discussion went that I could not guarantee anything, but the alternative proposal had a different dynamic, uh, and I was surprised that that's not what was resubmitted. Thank you, Kambina. I need a wee bit of wee bit of assistance in this one. Well, effectively, we were being told is that uh, there is a an alternative application, almost that would address some of the points, if not all of the points raised in the the, the report. Uh, but of course, we can only consider what is before us. Uh, in the, uh, the, the application itself, but I think the, the, the issue is, is so important in terms of regeneration that area that uh, the uh, I would like to, to refrain from taking a decision today in order to clarify these points uh, with regards to uh, the alternative application. I feel like. Ian, would that be appropriate? I think it's almost slightly a kin convener to the, the discussion that took place in relation to the last application. I think my my issue there would be that you do have a planning application before you, and that's what's before the committee for determination. Uh, and it's not uh, an alternative or a, a different application that's before you for determination. So my recommendation would be that that the committee gives consideration to what's before it at this point, convener. Okay. The uh, final take questions from the the, the floor. Could I, could I could I just say? Uh, Thanks for Nemo. Thanks for Nemo. Quite first. Convener, sorry again. I didn't have my hand up. No, it's a. Uh, Difficult to tell who's who wants to speak if they don't have a hand up. Could, there, could I speak? There was Councillor Nemo who was had a hand up before you. Oh sorry. Convener, as I said previously, I didn't have my hand up. Right, okay, I apologize for that. The uh, yeah, the uh it's a Goldie. Yeah. Convener, I've listened very carefully to what's been said by, by officers and by Mr. Dillon. 
and yourselves. Uh, as I said earlier, I've got probably more knowledge of that site than anybody else uh, at that even involved with this committee of the day. That's just because I've, I've lived here for so long. Um, that's I, I don't understand the issue in planning because the only thing there, if you, two or three years ago, as you know, sadly, bars moved away from there. The bars ran 40 lorries out of there, right down that road, because it's only a very short road and the Z bends closed. The only people that are up there now, apart from where Mr. Dillon is, is uh, Scots manufacturing stainless steel sinks, etc. They have got probably maybe say 20 employees. So you're going for 40 lorries using the road every day. And previous to that, it was a double bend as well. Now, isn't there a problem here with planning? But I need to say, Mr. Dillon, you got it terribly wrong because there's two days a year when the car park is, is busy. One is uh, on Remember on Sunday. So you've got Remember on Sunday and Marner's Day. And you've got a location there that is crying out to be improved. That that junction was one of the main, in the canal, was one of the main features of the canal. And I just don't understand the problem here with planning. Surely, if there had been a problem with planning, the licensing board would have gave that some regard and no gave half the car park away to uh, the Union Inn. Good luck to the Union Inn. I mean, that, that's, that again is bringing business to the area. It's crying out for this this type of stuff. Now, prior to, prior to being at Dillon's, uh, Dillon's having it, it was Crawford's, the Baker's. And it never caused a problem. And it ran vans out of there years ago. So I just didn't get the parking thing. And I need to be honest in saying, I hope I don't offend anybody. You, you, you'll tell me if I, if I offend officers. So I don't intend to do that. A big deal is always made of planning. Yet when you go through Falkirk, you get businesses with tents or whatever it is out in the street. Uh, but OK, it helps, it helps the license trade, and that's a good thing as well. But we can't say on one hand, uh, we're concerned about planning here, uh, parking on another hand, uh, stick things in the middle of the roads. So I, I haven't got a problem with this. I, I don't see, with all my local knowledge, and I'm being perfectly candid, I cannot envisage a problem with parking here, because there's no place else to go. When you come along past, you've got the Union in, and you've got Dylan's place as it is at the minute. Other than that, you, the only place you could go is is Scots, and you only go to Scots if you were if you were working there. And I cannot, for the life of me, see it being planning uh, parking problems. I'm actually have a mind to move that we grant this application to there. I see you entitled to do so. Yeah, I will. I'll just I won't do that. Then I'll move that we grant it. Okay. <laughs> In. Thank, thank you, convener, and thank you, Councillor Goldie. Um, it, is, it probably sounds a, a fairly tight esoteric point, but uh, in terms of going against an officer recommendation, there are reasons that need to be given. And I think what you're saying is you're satisfied on parking, which is the core refusal reason. But can I just clarify that you're you're happy broadly with the development in terms of things like the scale and massing, the use that's proposed, etc., of the development. Yeah, I, I would go further than that, uh, Ian. I would say that I think it's perfect for the location, to be truthful. So, can you hear me all right, aye? I, I, I can hear yeah, you very I, well, Councillor Goldie. more than happy with the, with the application as it stands. Okay. The, uh... Councillor Bowes. Hey, thank you, convener. Hey, can I ask a, a question? That, in its current um, usage, because um, there seems to be two or three um, current granted usage for it, how many parking places are required under its current usage but without putting the ice cream parlour on? It, it, is that its former use, councillor? Yeah, but, as Mr. Dillon said, he, he could uh, refurbish it. And and start up uh, and, and then use it under the current uh, uses that have been granted for it. Mr. Dillon's correct that it's sorry. 
sorry, convener. Uh, Mr. Dunn's correct that he could use that building currently for uh, its current use class without providing any additional parking. Um, I, I, I don't know what the parking requirement was for for the last uh, for for the last use. Uh, it it will have been more more than than the one space it has, but I don't know the 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 parking requirement for the current authorised use class. Because it would have been interesting to know what the difference was. Because if it was say twenty was required for for that, we're talking about a difference of four spaces here. Um, and I know ra rather than what's in the report and when uh, when Mr. Henderson's looking for his justification for for it, um, it would be something that would be interesting to know that because th th there might not be uh, such a at the moment the, the report says there is um, there's proposals for six, um, but the requirement is twenty four. Um, but but Mr. Dillon is is, is he quite rightly said earlier on. Could go in and refurbish that building, um, give it a coat of paint, and uh, and actually start up the business in there. Um, but but we don't know what the parking class um, amounts were for for that. Um, it, it's just given me, uh, to be honest with you, it, what I can see is going to do those parts anyway. But and and the, the basic add-on here is is the candied shop. Um, uh, so, uh, I would like to know what that was because because I think that's the difference here, uh, or is it twenty four on top of what the original was? Um, and I'm not trying to be difficult with you. I, I, it's just uh, as I'm trying to see the justification. I, I read the report and I get that the that there's six in the plan and that there's twenty four is what roads are saying, but I don't know what it was on. To use it as it is just now, because if that was twenty, say, and I'm not, I'm only using that as a as a rough number, then we'd not really get a big difference here. Um, and it may be a lot like, I say, I don't know that number, um, and I'm not looking to kick things down the road too far, but it might be worth getting the continuation on it to actually get what that number is. I've got to say that that, that I'm very much in support. Uh, what this is from from what I've heard uh, today, I, I appreciate the the experience, uh, uh, Councillor Goldie in the area, um, but but I just would like that little bit of information, um, if it can if it can be got because I think it might make quite a significant difference to everybody um, on on the, on the application. Anyone else? Convener, I've got some points. Firstly, to say, um, well, Mr. Goldie was correct there about the, um, the getting a license to the, the next door the other day, but that um, for the car park, but that is still to come up to plan, and, and obviously we we can't uh, discuss that at the, at the moment. Um, the the planning side of that, which is just got the, it's got the. Um, the license for for drink. Um, well, what I'm saying here is officers are saying there's a number of uh, they're saying there's an issue with parking, and saying that and that there isn't anything to to support granting the application. And I find that quite strange. I've just mentioned uh, the carbon footprint of the building. Obviously, carbon footprint now um, the environment is a material consideration now. So that is one. Um, we talked about uh, Mr. Down establishing the number of different and increasing the number of jobs, um, and obviously that is a material consideration um, now. We also seen photographs there, which is shocking looking. The 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 building that is there at present, and we're going to do some in an area where complete visual impact wouldn't be improved to that area that we're trying to revive under regeneration by a new property. And there is no doubt that um, another building near, a new building would enhance that area. 
which is, as I say, is another material consideration. But the, the officers have, have, have stuck to the one where the, the parking numbers. We'd heard for the applicant that there's never been a parking issue. We heard that from council officers, as I say, is a, a licensing board to, to the other application. And we've also discussed parking a lot just recently. And I know one's Toon Centre and one's no, but there was a huge uh, idea to um, move fully up to, and we've not decided um, that has been continued to build the, the new buildings up in the Toon Hall and everything up in the Toon Centre. And I remember the conversation very, I think, me, because I didn't see any four or 500 car parking spaces to take the people from the Nivso buildings. What was going to be suggested was we could leave some of the people could go and park there and officers could walk up to the thing. Way. And obviously a number of officer elected members were commenting that because of the environment such good new, we should be asking people to go on bikes and, uh, and use public transport and no take cars. So we shouldn't really be, be looking at all these car parking facilities in the future. Um, we should be looking at other things. Now, I'm only going with elected members and uh, the council, many of them sitting here, um, mentioned at that meeting. Um, I disagreed with them because I think um, I've got a walking stick and, and blue badge and I, I can't walk too far. But um, as I say, I'm just showing that this, this is discussion. Okay, it's a yeah. fluid situation, convener. And uh, I, I would say that there's enough justification in this that this would enhance the area and get jobs and everything else to maybe outweigh the the parking issue. Officers quite rightly have identified that um, as a as you know a, a material consideration, and they have taken a view. And I'm not saying that, that in some occasions it's wrong. It's certainly appropriate that that officers uh, point these out to us. But I think there is. And, and taking that into account, and that's a material consideration, and it would have been nice to go there. We also heard they talking about another application. Well, sadly, the rules is that we've got to comment on uh, the application in front of us. So that other application isn't there. We've no knowledge of it. We've not seen it. So it's not fit that we that we reply to that. But we have a duty. A man's paid his, his, his money for an application to convey to this application. And I say there's enough justification in my mind to support this in this circumstance. That doesn't mean to say that the, the policy is wrong on other other places with parking and that. What I'm, you what up, I'm saying is, yes, my view is that there is enough material consideration to outweigh the the the, the reason for refusal, in my opinion. But that doesn't say that everybody has to share my view, you know. Thank you for that. Councillor Murtagh. Thanks, convener. And uh, don't worry, I won't. I don't intend to, to take the bait on the, some of the previous um, comments, but I do note with interest um, the the uh, information offered by Councillor McClock as to change of heart in some of the the other discussions that we might be coming up at council. Um, I'm really pleased to hear um, from Mr. Dillon that, that so many of his uh, employees are, are cycling um, to work and I think absolutely um, where it might not be a reflection in quite in, in the travel uh, and pl planning policy. I think revised planning, uh, revised travel plans to workplaces probably will be something that, that come into to reform and not maybe not hit us in terms of planning legislation yet, but um, it's. I think it's good to, to have a bit, a bit of discussion about that at our planning committees um, and reflect the change in pace of things. I, I was interested, however, in what the planning officer was saying, um, and uh, Councillor McCluck is entirely correct that, and it was was pointed out by the legal officer that we have to look at the application which is before us um, and and making a determination. But I was interested in the way that the planning officer um, introduced that information, and I suppose. In previous committees, what we've reflected on is that we cannot make a. If something could be amended significantly, I think is the point is that if if we continue this, because I think you know there are really exciting proposals. I think everybody in this committee would agree that the regeneration of this area is really important. 
um, as part of a local development. Um, but it, but we want it to be right. Um, and if there was scope, maybe not to withdraw this application, um, which we have to determine before us and, and put another one in, but to have some significant amendment uh, within within the, the sort of professional judgment of the plan officer, do you think that within this application, um, aspects of what you'd seen where you were saying, you, you, you know, you were not, obviously you've not given a, a view, you can't give a view about minded to grant or anything like that, but you, you gave encouraging noises as to um, the merits of the proposal and the design. Do you think there is scope if we continue this application that, you know, some of those aspects could be incorporated or is it a case of if we, if, you know, we don't determine this application, we'd have to, it'd have to be something completely resubmitted. How do these two um, marry up since we can't obviously judge what's, what you're referring to is we don't have that information. It would be a materially different proposal and would require a fresh application to council. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of, I mean, I, I think that the the parking issue uh, and, and you know what's you know been put down by officers in terms of recommendation, uh, you know, is is quite clear. As there's obviously I respect the local knowledge that's being shared, but are there other aspects in terms of what could be um, continued for further information on clarity of that that you feel if we could get more get more. Um, information, perhaps a, a more feasible parking study to give information to the committee on that to give it to make us a little allowed to have a definitive decision. I mean, I'm feeling at the moment I don't quite have enough information to to feel that recommended to grant. Um, but I would like to see that the matter continued. But what what would planning officers um do they feel in themselves they could seek to get we could get more information back from from the applicant to to assist with that determination. I suppose we could get a more detailed parking assessment from uh, submitted, but it would still be parking that the applicant does not control. Okay. I, it's just in, in other applications, do we not have uh, situations where it's not necessarily that the provision of the, you know, it has to be all within the control of the, the, um, the applicant. I mean, I know, I know, I don't want to rehearse the situations about town centres because I know that they come under a different uh, area. But there are considerations where we're looking at the parking in the general area and whether that's controlled or not. Um, it's the availability of parking. Um, would an application have to be judged on how much that, how much parking, pertaining to that specific change in proposal? Um, or, or can we look at the wider study about what's available in the area? It's not just a question of mass, and um, I, I think the to think what's material about this proposal is that there's not sufficient parking to accommodate the persons who who would be on site. Never mind visitors to it. It's a it, it's a matter of fact and and degree. Okay, I mean I I think you know trying to. You know, obviously, as as has been said, the applicants put forward the, the, the proposals. I know Mr. Dillon has outlined, um, you know, a great deal of uh, lens that he's gone to to try to, you know, come up with different proposals and be accommodating and, and give different options. And I want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to to reflect that. Um, I suppose as well as a parking study, if something like a kind of um, almost a green travel plan for their business and for their for their employees, I feel something like that in, in a continuation might be helpful um, in terms of, you know, if there were demonstrable public transport links, if there was a plan in terms of the employees, if there were things like that, the information that could be presented to the committee in terms of this being a proposal um, that could be, uh, you know, shown to the committee that would not impact on or there would be a significant reduction in the need for that. Um, I would certainly feel more comfortable if we had more information of that nature um, and be keen to sort of see that in any continuation proposal. Um, so that's where I'm sitting with it at the moment. And I think that information would be helpful to the committee rather than just either ruling it out completely or going against what are fairly clear cut offs or recommendations, to be honest, based on the policy that we've got. You're on mute, convener.
Apologies. Got Councillor Blackwood, then Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Councillor Blackwood. Just following the same theme as Councillor Murta there, what I can understand is the Rose Department is saying a requirement for 24 spaces, and they all seem to be on site. And we're not taking into consideration within walking distance, there's, there's there's a public car park. I just can't understand why that can't be taken into consideration. Good point. Okay, that was Councillor Kerr. Thanks, convener. Convener, I, I apologise. I missed some of the debate because my laptop battery run down, my iPad overheated, so I'm on my third device, my phone. Uh, so it's pigeons. <laughs> that was the that, that was an extra resort, convener. Anyway, uh, can I just comment on that some of the the debate that I did here, and I, I probably missed Councillor McClucky, which isn't a bad well, thing. Missed, bad thing. Bonus, bonus, <laughs> bonus. <laughs> and anyway, as Councillor uh, Goldie's already stated, uh, that is it's a dead end road that goes to Jones's that was usually that was formerly used by Bars Factory. And um confounded the comments from Scottish Canals saying that, that, that they wouldn't be supporting it because uh, after Mr. Dillon on numerous occasions tried to work with them. Obviously they'll be hoping that doesn't get passed so that uh, they're in better can better situation to to negotiate. That's only my uh, personal assumption, uh, convener. Anyway, convener, same as Councillor Blackwood, which the last speaker, uh, it's not been taken into consideration the walking distance from uh, the development to the public car park, which you can get more than 24 cars in. Uh, I, I think for the area, I, I was over the moon when the Union Inn came up with our proposal and renovation for Lock 16. It's another enhanced area for the area. Uh, and the reassurance of another 15 to 20 jobs in the area uh, uh, Camlin must be a material consideration for us as a council. We should be supporting these small businesses who are trying to grow their business. Uh, and, and I'm sure that none of the elected members on the committee today uh, would think any different. And I'm unsure if Councillor Goldie's motion was seconded. If it wasn't, I would second that Councillor Goldie's motion that we accept the application. Okay, thank you very much for that. Anyone else? That's all. Thanks, Convener. Sorry to interrupt, but I just got I just got some information based on Councillor Bowes's question about what the parking requirement was for the existing use, and we reckon it's in the order of Councillor Bowes actually guessed it correctly. I reckon it was in the order of twenty. If that helps so, the deliberations. Convener, am I right to? It does. The reply then. In that case, then that that puts me in a position that I would be strongly in favour. Of, of granting this because you're talking about a difference of four parking spaces from what it was originally. Yeah, yeah, I'm inclined right. to, to, to go along with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I only have one reservation, and that is that we want the best for the people in that particular area. And uh, I'm concerned that the information was brought in over and above the report with regards to the potential for a second application because immediately. 
raises the question about what, what is best for, for the people in that area. It's what gives the best balance and what opportunities is there for uh, us to, to implement our politics. Uh, the, the fact that uh, the, the issue was raised over and above what's in the committee papers uh, as it's created that, that problem for me. And uh, but on the basis of uh, what, what Councillor Bouse is, 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 is in the, in the, in covered in conjunction with the roads and the uh, that's that's something that uh, you know has a strong me now back in to the, the position where I would support this application. Convener, I would suggest that then there's justification for, for doing that. And I know Mr. Henderson was asking that question earlier on. I think when we're talking about current um, approval on it would be 20. And what they're asking for is 24. You're talking about a difference of four parking spaces. I, I don't think that's as material then uh, as what it was when you're talking about um, six parking spaces to, to 24. Yeah, yeah, certainly the, uh... Thank you, convener, um, and and please do interrupt me, uh, particularly councillors Goldie and Kerr, as the uh, members uh, and uh, seconders uh. of the motion. If if I'm not reflecting things as you yeah. would have anticipated, can you, put, been... can you put that in writing, please? <laughs> Indeed, happy to, Councillor Goldie. Um, my, my scribbled notes here are that the, the committee, and this is the motion by you and seconded by Councillor Kerr, uh, a committee would be satisfied in relation to the following material considerations, which it would consider to be of such weight that planning permission should be granted. And these material considerations I noted to be the scale design and massing of the proposed development. Uh, which is considered beneficial for the area. Uh, the use proposed, which is considered beneficial to the location uh, and in terms of economic benefits, and that you're also satisfied on parking, having regard to what would be available under existing uses, uh, and also that parking could be accommodated within the wider area. And accordingly, committee would grant planning permission subject conditions uh, as determined by the acting director of development services. Is that a reasonable summary of uh, that's one, what your that's position? One, one for one, perfect. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Goldie, uh, and thank you for con convener for your forbearance and allowing me to do that. Okay, final application is a uh, across the ground. The West of Castle with Glen Road Torwood, excuse me, <coughs> for a uh, Crosby, Charlotte Crosby. Hi, convener. I'm going to take that on. It's John Cooney here. Um, just before we start, I'd like to to just Thank get anyone? Bernard to uh, bring up the um, the photos and and drawings document, uh, if that's possible, please. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Convener, sorry to disturb matters at this stage, but I noticed that Mr. Dillon's still on the call. And it was just to clarify for Mr. Dillon that uh, the committee uh, had no division on the last item and uh, agreed to, to grant permission in line, pardon me, with the, the motion that I'd read out to the meeting. So, Mr. Dillon, uh, I don't know that you, you may wish to or uh, would have any desire to stay for the rest of the meeting? No, no, thank you to you and all the councillors. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Okay, on to, to, to the last item. I think. Uh, now, we are 10 minutes away from, from uh, three hours being completed. The time flies when you enjoy yourself. So, keep this brief uh, because I'd like to hear the, the whole, whole picture uh, of this particular application. Who's uh... Thank you, convener. It's John Cooney here presenting. Hey, um, so good afternoon, all, um, and hopefully you can see um, the.
document that's been shared by Bernard. Um, this application is for two new houses at land to the west of Castlewood on Glen Road in Torwood. Um, it's presented to planning committee because it is contrary to the development plan. This is primarily uh, because whilst the front of the site is within the urban area of Torwood, the rear of the site would cross the urban limit into countryside. The site is also more than 400 metres away from the nearest public transport links. However, officers are recommending that permission be granted because of the following material considerations. Firstly, the houses themselves would have a modern design and would improve the street scene on Glen Road. They would replace an existing vacant and derelict roadside building. The new buildings would be within the urban limit, whilst their rear gardens and some hard surfaces for parking would be within the countryside. This prevention of new residential buildings within backland areas would be consistent with the purpose of the urban limit along Glen Road in Torwood. In addition, whilst the site is designated as semi-natural and ancient woodland, it has in reality been mostly clear of trees for many years. Of five remaining trees on site, four would need to be removed at the location of the proposed new houses at the front of the site. A planning condition would therefore secure the planting of replacement native trees. Uh, as such, the loss of designated woodland is considered acceptable in this particular instance. There was one representation received which asked if this site was publicly owned, um, and I can confirm that the site is privately owned. Uh, the material considerations I've outlined are considered to outweigh the conflicts with development plan policies. And the application is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you. Hey, any other colleagues? Anyone wish to contribute? Provost? Uh, uh, thank you, convener. Obviously, as one of the local members, uh, this is of great interest to myself. And also because of the controversial issues we've had in the past in Torwood for uh, uh, a number of developments that come up. And um, firstly, could I maybe ask the planning officer, having looked at the photographs, has their demolition already been started? And I see the ground has all been cleared. And we have that um, sort of wooden structure all round about it. Can you maybe give us an indication what that was about? Uh, thank you, Provost. Um, there was some ground clearance and there has been uh, some limited demolition on site uh, at the time where I attended for my site visit. Right, okay. Fine. Uh, uh, um, convener, I'm quite happy to, uh, to move the recommendation contained within the report. And just to say that quite rightly, that in a number of occasions, members are, are some, sometimes a wee bit inhibited and going against the development plan. But in the, in the past few months, there has been a number that's come through uh, in relation to the, the, the council bringing them forward because it's against the development plan. And in these circumstances, the, the proposed development was assessed, although being contrary to the development plan. However, the material considerations in form of the site circumstances and high quality design are considered sufficient to outweigh the terms of the development plan in this instance, and I would, I would agree with that. So I'm quite happy to move the recommendation. Thank you, Convener. Okay, I'm else? happy, I'm happy yeah. saying, Convener. Okay, thanks. Okay, so Blackwood. Anyone else? Can we accept the report? Agreed. Agreed. Convener, sorry, I'm. Uh -huh. Uh, as, as no to, to go against what you're you're decided. I was going to wait to the end to, to mention this convener. It's something that Councillor McClucky brought up regarding photographs. Uh, and Faye mentioned that it, it, it was prevalent to see the photograph during the presentation from the officers. But I'm sure whether it's two years ago or three years ago, I asked for that the photographs be in the presentation as in our uh, notes and it gives you a better understanding you can study them beforehand uh, and that was agreed by Mr uh, Mr Dryden but it's it's never happened and I just think it would be better if we had the photographs pre-meeting so we could have a better study at them yeah that's, that's a fair comment yeah uh... Mr. 
So Dryden is, is here to obviously today, but uh, we'll take it back to him. Yeah, thank and you, so, Toby. Um, I'll, I'll follow up that point uh, just to see if there is anything that we can do. I mean, hopefully you are finding the photographs and the presentation during the uh, the meetings useful. Um, if there is anything that we can do to improve and make things easier, then we'll, we'll see what we can do. It's been thanks, a, thanks, it's, thanks, it's, it's a convener, convener, I'm happy to wait with the proposal to grant, but is there, do we no need planning permission for the six feet fence of Bolton on about it? Take him, I mean, but that is a separate application. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And, 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 uh, in short, yes. The, um, okay, thanks so much for your, your attendance, colleagues, and your good-natured contributions.